this corner strategy of just yell things I don't understand. And you should clarify for people who didn't see the fight, his corner was literally one person. Yeah, yeah. I, when I say corner, I don't mean like the same sort of team that you would expect like a professional fighter at that level to have, like maybe a head coach and like an assistant yeah. coach, maybe like their striking coach is there, your wrestling coach is there, and give you different advice depending on what's going on. We're opening up with UFC Fight Night 167. It um, was, uh, and we're talking about Diego, Diego Sanchez yeah. versus Eddie Gordo. <laughs> and everyone, so, so Eddie this, Gordo wins. Oh, this no, was no, an interesting no. thing on paper because um, this is a perfect opportunity for um, Mike Pereira to like do the weird shit he does. Yeah, and then he didn't. Because like Diego Sanchez is a dude who's like a game fighter but doesn't have it anymore. Yeah. And hasn't had it for years. But he, he looks like Austin Powers. <laughs> he's fighting like this. He, he, yeah. And he's not going to move his head. He's not going to block very intelligently, yeah. honestly, when you're standing right in front of him. Right. So if he, you do want to step back and do a weird, like, floor capoeira kick, then you'll probably hit him. It's like, yeah. it's pretty, you have a pretty Literally good chip of hitting him. Anywhere. And this was, like, the one fight Michael Pereira decided not to do any of that. He's like, you know what? This 38-year-old man. I got to take this guy seriously. <laughs> fighting, like, harangue in Street Fighter. Actually, Harang would have done better. Yeah, Harang has faster feet and hands, though. Yeah. Like, he stands straight up because he's, like, a Taekwondo black belt master yeah. has been for 30 years. Yeah. This, the... This, this is, like, strange. Got, his, his head is, like, his brains are scrambled eggs and have been for <laughs> he maybe like way he, longer than they, anyone wants to admit. He looked like he was going to do, like, a, like, a keto, like, no touch. <laughs> yeah, stuff he was going to do some Steven Seagal shit. And... First his pinky through his bicep or something. I can't really, like... That's a fight that is, like, interesting to watch and compelling, but for, like, the very opposite reasons people like watching, yeah. like, live fighting. Yeah. Because I had no idea what was going to happen next, but I knew it was going to be pretty not good for Diego Sanchez. Like, I never knew, Diego Sanchez never had a chance. But I, I just couldn't really, some of these interactions were just like, hmm. Like, he was never in any, Mike Pereira doesn't seem to be in any danger. At all. Ever. But, like, there was some times I was like, why did he even let him punch him in the face like that? Like, Diego Sanchez would hit him a couple yeah, times. Yeah, like, you think why? he's, like, opening up because he wants to counter with something huge. Yeah, which and is he, like, then which he didn't. Which usually happens, yeah. and that never happened. Actually, all the, like, create the only thing he was, like, landing flush were, like, flying knees from, like, half court. It almost makes me feel like he wanted to, like, go easy. Did he Sanchez? just have a huge respect for Diego Sanchez? Maybe. Or maybe he was genuinely scared of how crazy he is as a human being. No, I think he was just like, I don't really want to kill this dude. Yeah. Like, why do he I think that guy that kills him? Yeah, yeah, he could. And, but then he got DQ'd. So <laughs> so right. Might as well. Yeah, because he kept hitting him. It, like, the ref was like, please stop hitting this dude while his hands are on the ground. Yeah. And they were like, but what if I did it again? What if I throw a knee on his Right, that's different. Head. It's not a kick anymore. Yeah. Diego tapped out. What do you feel about that? Because people are like, there's, now it's half and half. I hear half the people, and it was like mostly staff, because mm -hmm. that's like where I, I watched the post fight, and they're like, Diego Sanchez doesn't have a history of quitting, which is true, mm -hmm. but he's 38, and I don't know. I don't think it was like... He's like 22 and 18 or something yeah, like that. Like, yeah, like, like he knows he didn't win because he was getting beat up, Yeah, um, but maybe that was his way, I guess. I don't, like, I don't, I don't, no one wants to say it, but like... No, I that mean, seems to there might be a, a element of, like, gaming the system. Yeah. But in the same way that, um, who am I thinking of? Jeremy, not Jeremy, I don't like his name is Jeremy. The guy, the blonde dude who used to wrestle a lot. He used to also eye poke a lot. Oh. Um, and get eye poked a lot. Uh, I can't remember his name. He was, he's, he's like a 2010, like, maybe a little earlier guy. And was a light heavyweight until he got washed like three times in a row, and you never saw him again. And it's the it's he fought Paul Daly, and that was the fight Paul Daly got like ejected from the UFC and banished. Basically, I don't remember what you're talking about. Um, I remember the fight like clear as day. Yeah, I remember Paul Daly throwing hands after the bell. Yeah, because he was basically wrestled the entire time and right. was like frustrated. But I can't remember the dude he fought. They got him that, that got him that That's upset. not, I mean, like, obviously he's not a household name. So it's <clears> no, it was downhill after that. But, <laughs> but there's a an element of, like, I, I bring him up because he used to do this too. Like, there's an element of, like, gaming the rules and you can kind of give yourself some space to think. And, and that's, he used to do it a lot. Of, like, when he, was, he would go for a shoot 
and then push off like from the thighs, yeah. but put a hand down so he couldn't get countered necessarily. Right. And he'll wait there for like a couple seconds too long. And he's clearly not down, but he's like waiting for someone else to either try to shoot over him or mm-hmm. like try to fight him there or just take a step back and let him stand up again. Either way, I mean, a comment, even if it was like as maniacal, and I don't think it is, it could have just been in the moment and he just got kneed in the top of the head when he wasn't expecting That's it. That's probably <laughs> like more likely that yeah. it's just an incidental thing, but it's yeah. also super dangerous and yeah. you can't just let a person like continue right. to fight when that Which happens. Is, well, Jason Herzog was like, hey, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Cowboy up. Mm-hmm. No, he didn't say that. But it felt like that. <laughs> Buck up, bro. Buck up, bro. Put the, rub some dirt in it. No, but I think Jason Herzog did like what we all expect our referees to do, which is like, if he's not dead, <laughs> put him back in there. <laughs> yeah, or at least give him the opportunity to uh, prove how tough you are, or to prove that he can actually like this isn't yeah. something you can do anymore. Yeah. Like, well, the, the other argument is like Diego, maybe Diego Sanchez was really hurt, right? And he was like, I know I'm hurt. Maybe I shouldn't, and there's no way, f- there's no lose for him in that scenario because obviously if he loses and he goes back out, th- like he goes back out there and he gets violently knocked out, mm-hmm. <laughs> like because you know because he was probably concussed and probably really concussed. decided to go fight again. Need him in the head, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as hard as he could. So you can't sit there and be like, oh. But the other, there's another part of us, as a viewer, that was like, okay, well, he's talking, and he doesn't look too fucked up, and the doctor's like, he's good, and the rep is like, he's good, so maybe he took that route to just secure, like, the victory, because he just was gonna lose, and lo- and not get any mo- as much money. No, I just feel like nobody wants, like, I don't see what the win for Diego Sanchez would be in that position. Like, well, I would've, to, to throw extra salt in the wound, if I was me, I just would've retired <laughs> That's what I like. If he was like, and I'm done, then yeah. it, then that would make sense. <laughs> or it would, it would at least. I don't. I still don't think I would believe that this was some sort of plot he mechanized yeah. like during the fight. Was like, yeah. all right, this is how no. I, this is my way out. No. But at least then that would, that would also make sense because he's so, like, this is too much for me now, and, and I realize it right, right now. So right. it's time for me. To, <laughs> it's time for me to get the fuck out of here yeah, right now. Yeah. That, this guy's gonna hurt me. Right. Um. Yeah. No. I mean, I completely understand. Honestly, though. Sh- I, Truthfully, I I believe that like that fight he sh- that illegal knee that was like so clearly an illegal knee they should have been just like that's the end of the fight you know what I mean like 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 what are you gonna do deduct, deduct points and right like, yeah you're fine no that shit like, like that was, was a like, fucking knee that was a pretty blatant yeah and it was knee. like not a soft one it was not like like incidental I, contact that was a straight up here, knee here's where I can say if Jason Herzog continued continued it's like if he had him clinched up and he did that thing where you know they lift him up mm-hmm. and then like but sometimes like they're yeah. at the bottom yeah that's different because at that moment I know that's what he's gonna try to do I know he's got him in the clinch I know he's got him completely defenseless and the rule. Is uh, and, they, and they have the new rules adapted in this, mm-hmm. where it's like you can do that, right? So if he did that and it was like kind of close, I would give that opportunity. But it was like he was fully on the floor, and he just need him as hard as he could in the face, right. which yes. is against the rule. In one championship, it's okay, but <laughs> but here, we don't do that type no, of shit here. No, and and it's not like this is something that's new for anyone because no. that's all that happened again earlier. If you had to <laughs> ask any. Any common UFC sort of peruser, what, yeah. like, t- to try to name, like, their most obscure rule they know, is that you can't kick someone on the ground, probably. Can't do it. Like, or you can't, like, or the 12, the, the sixes, or whatever. Like, yeah. these, if, if you know, a drug dude at Buffalo Wild Wings probably knows this, then so does a fighter who's had 30 fights. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think the call was legit. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I can't get in the head of Diego Sanchez ever, especially no. now, I, right. but I don't But he looked fuckery. like he was still trying to, like, that's why I can't be like, he definitely plotted this, because he was, like, still trying to karate chop him the whole time. I think that's just Diego Sanchez. I don't think he's... I feel like he's just trying to... He doesn't do this. He, no. he looked like Solid Snake in Metal Gear Solid 3. <laughs> he looked shell-shocked like Solid Snake, yeah. for sure. Yeah, But, I don't see, like, I don't see, I can't even, like... Imagine in a, like a world where Diego Sanchez is thinking that hard about this. Can you imagine a world where people there are people in this country that believe Donald Cerrone threw that fight? <laughs> have you heard? Have you talked to anybody I've, about that yet? So I've seen, I've seen it. it. I haven't like talked to. Any, oh, that's good. not true. I, since I since I'm a person who is who spends around, <laughs> who spends time around fighters. Yeah. That means you 
Listen, you hear all types of weird and wild shit you sure do. from these people's mouths. You sure do. Because people That's who punch people it. just believe some dumb shit. And I I find it hard to believe and I find it I find it even more silly that people who I know have fought. Yeah. And who I know know people who have fought or very at high level. No, like we're not too far removed from Donald Cerrone's training partner because there's, there's, they go to so a lot of them are from New Jersey. Yeah. So like there are people we know that know Donald Cerrone. I know so, a photographer that knows him. Or, or like so so we know the kind of person he is. Yeah. There's a legacy of Donald Cerrone not giving a fuck right about things like it's not like, he's like well, hurting for money. What's the die for money? Like right. I'm not gonna care about money. No. What's the die for placement? Like right. why would you lose <laughs> Conor McGregor to be? better profile this is the best the, because, this is the best UFC's ever like made him look because win or lose he was still gonna make that bag anyway right the bag's secure right and he might be like maybe moving towards the end of his career now because he's fought a lot a lot he's fought a lot and, and he's been violently knocked out a lot too and he's been like close to the top and, and yeah. sort of deferred multiple times so like yes. you have to start asking yourself is this, what is this really what I want to do and he loves fighting but he also loves a bunch of other shit too well that's why I think he's going to be here for another 20 years it's probably like, no one's going to tell him not to so yeah. he's going to be BJ Penning we're probably just going to see him less than we have seen him before yeah he will fight four fight. times a year he'll Instead fight once six. or twice yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but also anyone can get got yeah. so like we're not talking about any like just any fighter we're talking about conor mcgregor who's knocked people out in seconds before like right. this isn't and he everyone who fights him with the exception of very few people maybe like diaz and habib all come out of that fight surprised about how strong conor mcgregor's straight all of them have said it because he doesn't look like a dude who throws very strong straight punches right. but everybody else everyone who's took one knows that motherfucker can punch the only one i can think of is like nate diaz who like will never come well that's the thing nate diaz would never come but, but his brother uh yeah his, his brother would might give him respect but yeah. like other than that no one's surprised by how hard he hits so like that that he would that Cerrone would also find that out the hard way right. makes a lot of sense just as far as the legacy of Conor McGregor is concerned again it's like I, I'm, I keep talking to fighters about it and like some of them are like I'm never gonna tell the guy how to fight because that's why he, what makes him how he is but we all just feel like his mindset is obviously not geared towards just being a fighter. Mm-hmm. And it's not even to be... He's said multiple times, he doesn't care about championship belts, he doesn't care about any of that shit, he'll fight anybody, and we believe you, cowboy. No one's questioning that at all, but people think that, like, because his mindset isn't really worried about winning, it's... It that gets, that's what he stops gets him from winning. from winning. The big ones. Maybe, but I think what's also stopped him is very good opponents. That too, but that's but I think that's what separates. But yeah, him. the difference between him and like Darren Till or right. whoever or people who like people who do picture and envision that's themselves all as they, champions. This is all they do. The they live, he envisions himself as a very good fighter. And he, I think that's he as far envisions as he got. himself as whatever makes him get that adrenaline high that he's mm-hmm. chasing after. And like, what better way than like he's obviously he's super talented, but people think like like with BJ Penn, everyone's like he was like the prodigy, right? Mm-hmm. So like everyone's like if he just worked a little bit harder, he probably would have been. Way better for way longer. Right, right, way better for way longer. Whereas Cerrone has that same thing, but it's not like... That was the difference between Penn and GSP. GSP was Penn, but worked hard. Right, right, exactly. Um, You know, people might feel that same way in Cerrone. But the only reason why it gets slipped by Cerrone is because he does such badass shit. It's not about a lazy, lazy, it's a matter of, like, his interests are everything. He's Mm. interested in doing everything. He's interested in getting drowned in a cave... (laughs) <laughs> six le- leagues under the sea he's, mm-hmm. under, he's into jumping out of parachutes he wants to, he wants to ride like rodeo broncos right. like he wants to do whatever the fuck like he you lives, can so do. no one wants to fix that because they are, romanticize that idea but like if I'm a coach I'm like dude I get you like doing that shit but like fight in Bellator dude like, <laughs> like, you can, like just, just fucking <laughs> but I don't think but as a person if he doesn't care yeah. about being the champion yeah. and then doing all those things that, that being a champion involves doing lots more press doing lots, yeah. like I wouldn't care about that either because who wants to do that? But right. he can still get paid UFC money to do it because he's still a draw, like a pretty yeah. good one and a, and, a, and a pretty important one for the UFC, yeah. at least up until this point. Yeah. So if the money's right, then why why change to him? Yeah, you know, and he's and almost all of his fame has been done in the UFC, and that's just like a claim to how good he is. Mm. Um, and because he put that work in early, that's how that you know Reebok payment, like in the Zufa payments, work out the most. If and you have more fights, you get paid a higher scale. So now that when he takes these fights, it doesn't matter. He could fight Alexander Hernandez. He did yeah. fight Alexander. <laughs> he made two hundred fifty thousand dollars to beat the shit out of that kid. Right. You know what I mean? So, and I don't. I, I see no reason for him to change his mental. This is what he wants to do for the reasons he wants to do it. I don't think it's not like I think he's out here 
doing too much and maybe someone should reel him in because he's putting himself in danger. I don't think that's true. Yeah, no, I don't think it's true either. Um, I also don't think, you know, he got beat so quickly by Connor because, I mean, it's not like Connor caught him with something no. he's seen a thousand times. But he I've him. never seen someone throw a standing shoulder to yeah, knock He broke his nose with, the three, like, with those three shoulders for sure. So, People were like, that's why he got knocked. I'm like, no, he got head kicked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. He was so busy worrying about, oh, I think my nose is fucked up yeah, that he yeah. didn't even consider the head kick yeah. that came right after but, but kudo, even more kudos to Connor because, like, he did that to a guy who, like, does Muay Thai and, mm-hmm. and that's it. And no one's jiu-jitsu. So it's, like, the idea that Cerrone, like, was will, a willing participant in some sort of fucking ruse is silly. Like I won't even entertain it. Although no, we did for 20 minutes. <laughs> no one, like, no one saw that no. coming. And, and I don't, it, like, there's that's no people, way to prepare for something I, I, like th- that. You know what it is? It's, like, you know when, um... Uh, like and pick and pick a school shooting out of a hat, mm. like, like that a shoot a school shooting happens and then there's like fake like there's always like one or two people or three people got <laughs> yeah folks someone's got the drip from Q yeah. and they know it's fake. I just think when something so horrible happens, people are just like let's just make some shit. So up. they're so invested in one it going yeah. one way yeah. that they they can't accept they can't that even imagine that something that yeah something horrible just happened and I think that's what happened here. Like the McGregor people were always like. Like, you know, oh, he's going to fuck that dude up, and who is that? Who the fuck is that guy? Right. <laughs> and everyone's like, you're being disrespectful. All the UFC fans, you're being disrespectful. You're a casual. <laughs> you don't even know. And then he got murked in 40 seconds. And they can't allow the murder like, fans to be Yeah, it's just right. the gears stop. And, <laughs> yeah. like, and, I mean, all this to say that I don't. That Diego Sanchez is a person that I agree in the same vein, has no motivation to to f- at least train eight hours for, a day for like fuckery yeah. but also no motivation to do this very well anymore. Yeah. or maybe he has motivation but like I don't think he physically can anymore or the other scary part is like Cerrone did I mean like I don't think it's I don't think it's the pro- a problem with work for Donald Cerrone because he's willing to put the work in the fight camps he goes to fight camps he works very hard he um, you know he stays in really good shape he always comes in, he never misses weight mm-hmm. like don't knock the guy's work ethic but like it just seems like the there seems to be a mental lapse with him being successful on these big stages, and him being buddy buddy with these guys right before, or just like blatantly disrespect. Like when he fought Darren Till, he's like, "I've never seen tape." Everyone's like, "Hey, Maybe watch you some should tape." Watch tape. <laughs> and then he's like, "Damn good." And then he shows up and he's like, "That guy's like six eight, <laughs> two hundred fifty pounds." He's like, "I did not. No one told me." He's like, uh, you, yeah, you I didn't tried. know this man was an enormous <laughs> giant. Yeah, I should have googled him once ever. Yeah. And then that we saw the same thing happen there. You know, he was like, he's like, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he felt that left hand, and he was like, oh. But I mean, how do you? I mean, besides, you can take watching tape and technique seriously, but I think that only goes so far, right? Like, well, it changes your game plan. It can, but, here's the, but here's the thing if you I, have no intention of getting your game plan, yeah. then it doesn't change your game yeah. plan at all. Well, it could just be also his chin too, because um, everyone was like, he himself is like, this is his focused and game plan written as I've been for fights. <laughs> and he got murdered. But, you know, it could be a number of things. It could be Conor McGregor is that good mm-hmm. and we just have to accept that. Or, you know, any like number of things. We've accepted it. Like, I feel like we, like, not only have we, do we have to accept it, yeah. but he's fought, he he's had the struggle fights that, yeah. that have kind of proven that he's good. Well, maybe I, not, maybe not as many as I'd like to see. Yeah. But, I mean, and there's definitely rematches I think he should have had yeah. when it was still viable. Right. Like, I think most people are... Jose Aldo now is just going to work him, and that's going to be a mistake. It would be sad to see But, like, a rematch right after that knockout would have probably been something. That would have been good, because we would have got to focus Jose. And I feel like that's what... That loss to Jose changed the way he fought. 100%. He doesn't throw leg kicks ever. Ever. He doesn't, like... It's all boxing It's now. super safe boxing, yeah. and it's weird, because it's... And not only has it changed the way he fought, it's changed his expectiveness because yeah. he used to be a very like elusive Muay Thai guy. Yeah. And he and doesn't even get off his feet anymore. Yeah, now he's like, I'm a pro boxer now. Everyone's like, well, no. Well, but maybe you shouldn't be. Yeah. And then also everyone in your camp is on steroids. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Um, yeah, that was strange. I mean, I mean, not strange. It's like he got in his head, like, so he got so far in his head for that fight. And then it was successful, 13 second knock. And then that was embarrassing on its own. It was like he got 13 second Well, hit. there was also like this the, the, they started the run up to this initially, and then uh, Jose got injured. Yeah. They had to like they put it, it off like a year. Yeah. Well, but, that's why you fought Chan Mendes. Right. But yeah. the problem became like Connor didn't stop 
working him. Yeah. So, like, he had been drilling it was in worse. Jose Aldo's head yeah. for, like, two and a half years. Yeah. It was like the opposite effect of yeah. uh, Chael Sonnen and, and Anderson Silva. Yes. Where Sonnen lost in the, fa- in the last 30 seconds of the fight and then got suspended for a year and spent that entire year trying to, like, talk himself back into a rematch and right. did and got annihilated. <laughs> yeah. That was revenge for that. There's also, like, a lot of rule breaking in that fight, but, like, whatever. What? Oh, and the Chael Sonnen and Then a rematch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silva grabbed his trunks and pulled him to him off the, like, and then grabbed the cage and was swinging on him, like, multiple times. Like, ref was just like, whatever, dude. That's because the Illuminati refs were listening to Born in the USA before the song. (laughs) Oh, yeah, they were activated. Yeah. True. Yeah. (laughs) The betraying candidate. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, we're... What were we talking? Oh, Point being, we talking? Diego Sanchez is not a person who's here for fuckery. He's yeah. also not a person who's mentally here for it. And like, he wants to fight. I don't know what his motivation is to show up and keep getting like these calls and, yeah. and Dana. And I don't know what the motivation for Dana White is is like the, to say yo come out and fight. I guess. Also, shouts out to Dana White for completely like not being a shitbag on social media anymore and just in the privacy of his. Office. Yeah, I think someone told him when he sold the company, like yeah. oh, we need you to fucking chill. <laughs> You're hey, fucking this hey, up for me. Don't call our fighters that are champions losers. Yes. Because... Maybe I, maybe don't call the champion a loser. Yeah. Maybe stop calling so uh, Cyborg like... a man. Yeah. You spent all this money to get her here. Yeah. That's really not going to work for and us. And then ship shore her the fuck out. Right. As soon as they had the opportunity. Maybe stop letting Ronda Rousey say whatever the fuck she wants, yeah. wherever she is. You, gotta like, stop you know that. what? We're going to double down <laughs> and let all of our superstars have some crazy mm. control over our company. Um, speaking of which, did you see John Jones fight Dominic Reyes? Yes. Spoilers, Dominic Reyes won. He did, but it didn't John matter. John Jones won. Uh, because <laughs> the refs and the judges agree that John Jones won. Yeah. Um, that's such a weird fight. Maybe not a weird fight. It was actually pretty good. It was a good fight, but uh, John Jones fucking lost. Uh, Three rounds in a row. That's a robbery. People are like, well, a robbery one is when it's 4-1. I'm like, who's making these yeah, who, rules up? Who has the Wiktionary is, for yeah, robbery? Isn't 3-2 isn't, isn't <laughs> enough? Like, isn't beating is Isn't you winning clearly but yeah. losing actually yeah. enough? The only two arguments that I saw were John Jones was advancing. Yeah, he's going to beat the fuck up because he was advancing. Mm-hmm. And what was and, well, Reyes was fighting off his back foot. I'm like, that's his, that's been his... Whole style. Yeah, that's the, the, that's the Dominic Ray, the take three steps back yeah. and then fight when you and think he's withdrawing. Pop him. Right. And then, um, like, well, John Jones had two takedowns. And it's like, he had nine attempts and then he reversed those two <laughs> takedowns. So the only two takedowns he got were immediately reversed. So it's like, what is the argument here? And then fucking John Cavanaugh comes from the, from the rafters, was like, I look at it as if it was like 10 rounds. Because he would have won after wh- however many. And it's like, well, that's not what happened. Yeah, unfortunately, these fights are five rounds. Yeah. So you don't have to really look at it that far, yeah. actually. They gave, yeah. you the, they gave you the limit to look at. Right. And then someone, was, which was brilliant, was like, okay, so then Nate Diaz won the second fight. <laughs> <laughs> so you're admitting that. <laughs> I, the, I think the, the real travesty here isn't that Dominic Reyes won, but clearly, but lost anyway. Is, Is that, that he real? can't speak Spanish and he's... <laughs> so violently Hispanic this whole run. That's part of it. But also, like, that rematch is not happening. No. No. Do you know why that rematch is not happening? Because there's no bag there. There's no... Well, there could be. Because there's a little bit of things there. But John Jones doesn't want that to happen. Well, that's what it... Like... He escaped. <laughs> <laughs> he got it and he escaped. Like, but, like... He got the bag and escaped. He did the dash. If... I, I do not believe there's, like, a, a metric that Dana White has access to that suggests that there is real draw on a rematch well there's that but also um jam black blotch yeah <laughs> black block block what block which block what's block what's and any any version of those um one he beat cory anderson the and fuck he's up. like hey, john jones i don't know why he's more at <laughs> he is He's like, uh, very nice win. And then he, and then John Jones did the T pose. And then uh, now that's the fight they're going to make. And, that's what he said. Uh, Corey Anderson was talking that cash shit up yeah. until that fight for John Jones. Yeah. And John Jones is like, who the fuck is this dude? Honestly, though, if Corey Anderson beat Jan, Jan, mm-hmm. I'd watch the fight. I'd watch that because now he's got a little bit of a 
hype behind him on a national scale. scale. And, and the, then, the dusty Dominic Reyes finishes puts a lot of things in a different perspective. Right. I don't and th- there I, needs to be more characters in the John Jones story that aren't, like, fucking Daniel Cormier. I think this is what's happening. I think Dana White and everyone, who, and Nick Maynard and all those people who are doing all of the scheduling for these fights, I think they're, like, learning from what the problem was. Was, like, we keep watering these belts down by having them all fight the top people. Mm-hmm. So, like... Running it back with Dominic Reyes is a possibility for John Jones because that's a that's a title fight. But I think that this was flo- Bisping floated this out. He's like Dominic Reyes, or I'm sorry, not Bisping, um, guy who said don't talk about my mom to Kevin Lee, Michael Chiesa. <laughs> Michael Chiesa was like was like I think what they should do is have Volakowicz fight Dominic Reyes and then whoever wins that fight uh, gets the, gets gets the, the next thing. Fight I'm like that makes sense. Like but Jones. if Dominic Reyes gets killed, then now you've got a like, top five guy who's going to get dropped down. If Blackwoods or whatever gets killed, maybe it's not because he's bad, maybe because like we just threw him in there with Dominic Reyes, the number one contender, so that's kind of washing down him. Mm-hmm. And then now Dominic Reyes, now you can only have a Dominic Reyes thing. So I think they're learning. Well, like, is the problem then, you, or is the, the answer then to tune them both up with different tune-up fights? Or, or give um, Yan the fight now, give Dominic Reyes something else to do? That's, what, that I, that's what I think That's what I think they're doing. I think Block, 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 is fighting John Jones next mm-hmm. because he's the up-and-comer. He just got a headliner on ESPN+. Plus. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It seems like those guys who are in the, on the EP, ESPN+, Plus, which now has a membership of 7.7,000 million people. Mm-hmm. Thousand people. Thousand people. Jesus. Yikes. Um, 7.7 7 million people now because of Conor McGregor. It was 6.6 before. They got 1.1 for Conor. And then, um, now, so now they and have that And everyone forgot to cancel their subscription. Right, so. right. <laughs> so now they're going to watch. So they're going to watch that. And then, uh, or have seen that, they're like, well, fuck, I might, get, I might as well get some use out of this useless subscription. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they put that on, or, or bars. I'm, I'm assuming like half of that is <laughs> bars um, in the world or something. Um, and, you know, re- regardless of the fact that a lot of people were watching that after the John Jones thing and after the Conor McGregor thing. So they're like, now they're getting able to build this star and not have him get killed next week or whatever mm-hmm. by some other top five guy. Because, like, it's not like football. Like... I think that's how they were kind of having them do it before, like the tournament style, like an unofficial tournament style. Mm-hmm. We'll have the number one, the number one guy, the number two guy. But now we kind of see block. Uh, God, what fucking, can you have picked anyone else? <laughs> Change your name, God. <laughs> you can't just tell a man. Yes, we can. From that's the, the country I from like. one of the whitest countries okay. on the planet. I can't change his name. listen. They're not white. They're <laughs> Polish, <laughs> Polish people are Polish. white. Yeah, they're they're white. They're white when they live here. But oh, Polish they're Polish people, there. They're, they're, Polish only, they're there. only white when they come here? Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay. So, they're brought into the system. The same thing with the Irish people. Okay. okay. So they're Irish until they come to America. And so, and then, then they're, they're, so America they're makes you white. America yes. robs you yes. from your heritage. Yes. And makes until you we white. have your votes in this country, you're not white. Okay? okay. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the controversial take, I think. Yes. I've never heard before, but yeah. I'm going to go with it. Why I'm not? This is my white genocide speech. Okay. I'm getting it. I forgot my major point. That the UFC moving away from a merit-based sort yes. of ranking is which maybe is like better good, for the UFC. Which is good for the NFL because like those same teams are going to exist next year. Whereas like if you murder somebody, they might not fight again. Or they fight worse because... Well, the same team will exist, but maybe not the same players on that team. Well, usually for the NFL, those guys usually sign long-term contracts. Unless they're doing it one year. But the irony is that the Patriots don't sell, sell uh, yeah. like are settled with long-term contracts, but they have been well, they keep a team that shows time. out, that shows up yeah. to championship opportunities for the past 10 years. Well, they, I, the, I'll only disagree because they're key people that fit sure. the system stay there a long time. But if their offensive lines, they stay relatively yeah, at least three or four years. A lot of them. <clears throat> running backs are cycled, wide receivers are cycled, mm-hmm. because Tom Brady's always going to be there. And they usually have like one star player that they keep for two or three years at a time. Mm-hmm. So those pieces are always there. But um, for uh, the UFC, like not everyone's going to perform like Joanna Young Jacek, who will take an L after a championship and come back and just beat up Michelle Watterson or mm-hmm. somebody. You know what I mean? Like, like some people lose and then they're different. Jose Aldo. Yeah, you know, like they didn't have, and they didn't give Jose Aldo the same benefit, uh, and it's not because of, uh, you know, that's just like how they were pairing people up. They were mm-hmm. having the best people fight the best people. Where now it's like Blackwoods fights like 
a middleweight, and now he's uh, number three or number four. Well, I think you know? that's it's like the boxing problem. Yeah. Uh, because that ha- that happened. On, that ha- I mean, it still happens. Um, depending on where you are. Yeah. Uh, it's difficult to find like really good opponents for really good boxers, especially because being a really good boxer usually means you went through a particular system so you went to Olympics and you know people who knew people all, all the way up and now you can be you can have 20 wins 20 knockouts and then start making money um, based on promoters or yeah. you've just been fighting forever you have 45 wins and no losses maybe they're not all knockouts but like you've won so much that people just can't stop finding you places Yeah, but now that person's so good that they have to fight someone but no one knows the fuck they are so no one's gonna buy this thing so you right. have to like put them into fights of people who will actually be draws but those draws have such power over how much like over how these cards can even be structured because they are the draw and they recognize it thanks mm-hmm. to like the Ali Act that like shares profits with, with such a large mark like 85% of profit made at a, at a boxing event is like delivered to the fighters in some way um so and and really good fighters get most of that and they know it so like they can dictate who they fight when they fight and it changes the way star making is is sort of made that that the UFC wants to control that by themselves and like not necessarily defer that to the star player every time is interesting mm-hmm. it's very pro wrestling to say like there is a number two and number three that's in the way, but <laughs> what if we just skipped over that dude and went to number six because right. number six more interesting right like. And, well, I, and even I don't if think like, Jan number is more... one beats number six, yeah, like number six lost to the best fighter in the world, and I guess we're supposed to feel compelled, like maybe number six could have beat him, but like he's number six, so probably not. And then the best in the world just beat number six. So like, is that really a great defense? Like, is that just a notch in the belt? Like, when we look back at the legacy, are we gonna say like he bought he fought some really good fighters, or are we gonna say he fought a bunch of like? people with momentum at the time like I, I i wonder and i i think about this a lot because we, we speak about like like a golden era of ufc mm-hmm. like where the best fighters were always fighting the best fighters and they were all very interesting like the best like that whole sort of met sarah matt hughes like gsp bj Penn sort of like square that used to happen that in the, those in those weight classes right. like like the, the the golden age of 205 where like quentin jackson left like pride and came over and like all those kind of fight like i wonder how many of those fighters were like actually like the best fighters at the time or like the ones we were talking about at the time same with like brock like most of brock lesnar's wins like kind of found that out about ronda right right like like, was was betch correro like was she it the (laughs) we couldn't find anyone else she was the number one champion yeah she was the number one huh uh and like so I guess this is all that to say this isn't necessarily a new strategy. No yeah, way. it's not new, but I think that's what ESPN wants, and Maybe. I think that's ultimately what the UFC wants because they have to build other people that are not named John Jones in that division because that division right. do- that division is like on when the he verge came of back like he killed it again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah, and I wonder though, like this is kind of the what what led to that like drought of talent when Dana White sort of put his stamp on a couple of particulars and they all kind of washed out. Yeah. Like you run the risk of doing that again. Yeah. Uh, so there has to be some sort of mixture of it. And it has to be a, a better balance of this. And yeah. or like it's a, it could be as bad as like we fucking have nobody left to John Jones has beat. Right. And that's why I just want, don't want someone bring middleweights up. I don't want them spending like so much time, money and resources to like promote a Todd Duffy and then him get like motherfucking washed and fight two and like they were like, well, back to scare one. Or um, Paige Van Zandt, who's still a fighter, still active, still going. Bad. Like, and still not, and not, and never was a bad fighter, yeah. but she was pushed in a way that made her seem like she was a product. And they should have slowed it down a little bit. Really like, fair on, for her. Fake tits real quick. It wasn't fair to her. It wasn't profitable for the UFC, but yeah. just everybody looked stupid, really. Yeah. She's getting hurt all the time. She's breaking her hand. Right. And, all that and shit. like, who did that help? So Nobody. you don't want to. Nobody. So, like, part of this is, yes, you kind of still need your John Jones to become this thing you can throw anybody against because he is reliable in particular ways. Maybe not to show up to a fight like Silver. Well, 
Last few fights. Last few no fights have worked. It's been fine. He's doing good. So, he, or how long though? Most importantly, he's reliable when he fights. So this we is, know he's going to fight relatively well, and he's probably going to win. So if he comes as juggernaut, won't watch be be beaten. Yeah. So it doesn't it, if he wins long enough, it doesn't really matter who we throw against him. We don't want to throw anybody against right. him to see what happens. I'm I'm gonna start it today. We're gonna have a John Jones pool. Um, how long it's going to take for him to fuck up. Yeah, he's at, what, three fights fine three so fight, far? Yeah, two fights. So how many more fights do you think he, before he chokes before something like happens. a stripper or something? Or hmm. hits a pregnant woman with his car? Or... Do you get extra points for, for guessing how he fucks up? Yeah, but if you, like, four games... Like, if you're, like, four games and you get the four games wrong and you're, like, he crashes a plane into a building... But I you got like, the crash of plane into a building, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you, but it was six. It was after six fights yeah, and not four. Yeah, either or. If you mm. guess the method, or if you guess the amount of time, you, there's should be something. Oh, it's different. definitely going to be another sexual assault. <laughs> Has to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. But probably, I would give him two more fights. Has he been in trouble for sexual assault? Well, there was the alleged stripper thing. He choked the stripper. And like, oh, what well, it started off with. It started off with like a weird, like he was like grabbing trying her, her and like trying to like put like, money no. in her shit. And he, and he's like, like, that's criminal sexual. Well, he choked her too after. So that is an assault, then, right? A sexual assault? Because it started off, he grabbed her or something, and then she was like, "This is horrible," and he choked her. But the, like, but wasn't the intention initially sexual? Like he got aggressive after the fact of him sexually trying to do something to this woman yeah that falls under harassment or something first right that's no like yeah that's what that's what i'm saying no, I mean, like up there with... okay so then criminal sexual contact from our in-house lawyer thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is do you say that because you think you could win based off of that accusation or Oh, <laughs> uh, so I feel I feel you. I'm learning some shit. I didn't know. I th- I, I was like, I don't, what constitutes a sexual right, assault? So like, we'll say in four fights, it'll be criminal sexual contact. Okay, criminal way. sexual contact. <laughs> Fucking John Jones. I feel like he's maybe done with the drugs. What state was it? Was it in Albuquerque? I thought it was in New York, or, but I don't really know. It was last year, I think. Right? Yeah. I don't remember. Wasn't that New York? Point is, I'm not confident he's like gonna live his life. You don't think he's a changed man, free. Jared? No. You don't think he found God? No. The, you don't think he's got the fear of God in him? I think he found God years ago, but was yeah. like, "All right, God, uh, <laughs> we're cool, but I need you to sit this one out. Sit this, take a knee." Yeah. So far, God's been taking a knee because he's been killing it. <laughs> like, I don't know that he's passed. I don't know if he's he's he, done with it yet. He beat the case. He did. Is. Which, he beat the cases. Yes. He continues to beat these cases. Yeah. Um, was suspended. Was suspended. And Dana White was like, like he'll never main event a card again. Yeah, that was a he, lie. And then he moved a whole event over. <laughs> yeah. Then not only did he main event On uh, eight uh, days a notice. card, Dana White moved heaven and earth to make sure that yeah. happened. What do you think? Like, like, what is the vested interest in keeping him like in his position? Because, because like I they think... bend over neck and back, like there's other people who are just as productive, who don't miss weight, who are like way better influences, who don't. Because he's still he's still an conduct. incredible draw. Yeah. You don't you don't have to build him anymore. Like John Jones is a name that you have a feeling about. That's true. Casual fans have a feeling about John Jones. They they sold out uh, the Toyo uh, tire thing. That was like a record. And he's one of the only people that reliably draw. Pay per view buys and and gate buys like it's him. He's it's our Floyd Connor, Mayweather, and that's kind of it. He might yeah. be our Floyd He's Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather, and who also does. So you kind of have no choice but to put it like put him in that position. Like, are you going to put John Jones on a card and him not be the main event? That'd be really fucking silly. John Jones was the was he in the Ultimate Fighter? No, I don't think so. He was killing Ultimate Fighter guys though. Yeah, he came around the same time that the first two or three Ultimate Fighters yeah. and beat the shit out of all. He just fucked them in their faces. Um, though I think I don't think he fought Bisping till later. But Did he fight Bisping? I thought he fought Bisping. I don't think he fought Michael Bisping. He fought Chill. No, I'm thinking Silva. Yeah. He, Bisping fought Anderson Silva finally. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and won that first round. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, there there are no stars like John Jones anymore. No. And he's, like, the last one, so I don't think whether Dan wants to or not, he has to respect him. If, if 
draw if selling tickets and pay per view buys is what he wants to do, mm-hmm. you have to keep John Jones where he is. Yeah, especially since John Jones is going to keep winning, whether he wins or not, he's going to yeah. keep winning. So like he's going to keep having this belt. You can he they tried to put him somewhere like to put him in the middle of the pack and work his way up, and then he did very quickly and got a belt. They got a title shot immediately and won it. Well, I I uh, Jan, I'm with, I'm with you. I'm with Jan. I want Jan to. I want the Polish power to win. The Polish power. Yeah. I mean, I want to watch the fight. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think that he'll win it. I don't know about it, but like he could I'm, though. I'm I mean, he's six two. <clears throat> yeah, but Jones is six four. Jones says like a 77, 78 to eighty reach. I don't remember. Although what it was. watching him fight Dominic Reyes, like. It gave me a little hope, like, okay, the, it's he- interesting the, now. the heavier guys that are quick are going to be It's interesting now. It was, it's kind of like um, when uh, Lesnar beat, what's his name, um, the guy with the back problems, who had, at the time, had won 13 fights and all by knockout. Mark Hunt? No. Um, but that was after. This is, I'm right up before Dos Anjos beat him. Was it Dos Anjos? No, it was um, the other one. The other Mexican. <laughs> yeah, the other Mexican. Uh, well, no, he's not Mexican. Because uh, Arnold is a Mexican. No. The way I'm thinking it was Mexican. Cain Velasquez. Cain Velasquez. Yeah. Cain Velasquez whooped his ass. Molly whooped The fight ass. before that was when everyone was like, oh shit, like, he has no hand defense at all. If anyone with big hands just hits him a couple of times, yeah. it's going to be a problem He's a golem. Like, he just grabbed <laughs> people. And, and he basically lost through. the first round, but like, and was, basically, was in a position where... 60% of other refs would have called the fight in the first round. He got to a second and then got guy in an arm triangle almost last time I saw him. But I think the secrets have been revealed. Like, or or maybe, I don't know, maybe Jones was heads. Maybe he didn't take Reyes seriously enough. But, or he's just lost a step and, like, someone with good angles can really get, can finally find a way past his long reach and out of, his, out of the way of his weird knees and elbows. But people are interested now because he. This is the first time he's looked defeatable since the first time he fought um, big Norwegian. Oh, boxer. the guy who retired with him was like JK. Yeah. Um, <laughs> JK, the money still. Alexander's Guff system. Yeah, Guff system. Yeah, that's the. That was the last time I remember John Jones looking like he was in trouble at all. Yeah, that first fight, people were like, he won. Yeah. But that's how I felt about Reyes. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I was like, this one's a little bit more convincing because that fight was close. I'm like, it was. It's non-negotiable. He got beat three rounds in a row. So like, I can see Vest like re- just kind of built an interest to see anybody fight him now because yeah. like everybody's saw that fight, and yeah, and definitely saw that fight. Yeah. So like, what did, what did he turn this into? I just think not everyone is as big as Dominic Reyes is though. No. And not. A, but here's the thing, like. What? Maybe it's just older. You know what I mean? He is like, what are you, like 32? He's 30, 31? or 3. Yeah, he's Ron our age, so, yeah. uh, so I want to say 33. Maybe a little older than me, so yeah. I want to say 33. But he's also been fighting since he was 21, maybe, 22. It's also true. And he's put his body through a lot. He changed his body dramatically like okay. a couple years ago, like yeah. a couple years ago, because he had to stay off that shit. So he, yeah, had to, yeah. he started powerlifting. So or, maybe he's just different now. You know, maybe that's the point I was making before, where it was like, this is our. This is his Eminem phase of his life where <laughs> he, yes, I'm still making music that's selling millions of dollars, but it's boring because I'm sober. Uh, maybe, but I don't know if I attribute his style to him being fucked up, but you really don't know because don't know. no one knew he was so fucked up until like four or five years ago. Said, and then, who did he beat? He was like, only, I only did cocaine. Like, like he just didn't, uh, like he just didn't have a can. He didn't train for him. Daniel Cormier. He said, that's I, right. I beat you on cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, all I did was do cocaine. I'm like, then I made you better because that was an Olympic wrestler that you beat. So, like, I wonder... Shouts out to cocaine. So, there's the draws there. Yeah. I would definitely watch... I would have watched either one of them fight him, really, but, like... Yeah. I'll take it, yeah. I'll take it. Um, another UFC-related thing. Um, what's his name? Paul Felder fights Dan Hooker next week. He does. This is a f- I'm only watching that one. So. It's like it's the main event, and honestly, like I don't know any of those people on this uh, card. I'm to with literally zero disrespect. Angela Hill is on here. I'm not watching any of these. I'm not watching her fight, but I do respect her being like, hey, I do. Mike you, Perry's not black. Big respect to Angie Hill, who's the only yeah. person telling Mike Perry is not black. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you knew this or not. 
it's also like cosplays at all her weigh ins, so she does. shout out. Um, I mean, Kowalkowitz is fighting. She is fighting. Um, Shouts out to Kowalkowitz. She's a pretty for, reliable. Like, for, me, for me being like, oh shit, she can fight Yoani and Jacek, and then like getting immediately knocked out by Shevchenko. <laughs> that's what Oops. After that. um, Two different fighters. But really, the fight is Hooker and Felder. And Jimmy Crute, but he lost his last fight. But I mean, Jimmy Crute's still a good fighter. He's still good. Um, I just don't think I care. Yeah, me either. And that's not any shade to Jimmy Crute. I mean, he hasn't done anything worth... Like, he had one opportunity... Like in his last fight, to be like, "Hey, I'm with these. I'm with. I'm with the shits." And then I'm pretty sure. How did he lose? He got submitted by uh, Misha Kirkmouth in the first round. Mm. So that was like his first big name that he was fighting, and then he just and that's what happened. Got beat. It's so a it's a bad look. He's got to build a little bit more before people start caring again, because that was his opportunity to break superstardom. Because that guy. True. Got beat by Johnny Walker, and then Johnny Walker was like a household name before he got beat by Corey Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a good effort. This the, like this is a good um, example of like just putting wins together it doesn't matter. Like you have to put wins together against the right people. I would felt so embarrassed because the person next to me was like, "Who's the Johnny Walker?" I went to because I was there. He's mm. like, "Who's that Johnny Walker guy?" And I'm like, "Oh, watch this. Oh yeah, let he's me... gonna fucking kill this guy <laughs> because he's six six and he's a super." and did all these cartwheels and then he got murdered the first nope. 50 seconds and I was like never mind <laughs> don't listen to me um, I think he'll bounce I think Johnny Walker will bounce back he's, he's been not heard of he's been not heard of the only last time I heard of him was parts of his coaching staff were telling people that he didn't give a fuck about this enough he needs to try a little harder yeah which is strange because it's is like you're calling out John Jones and he gives a little fuck about it the difference is like Anyone who's been gassed up to believe they're the next big thing will call out God. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What's up, God? I'm the, I'm, everyone's telling me I'm the shit. And then Corey Anderson's like, I'm five inches shorter than you. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do one cartwheel. Yeah. Bitch. <laughs> not a single worm. Not one. And, and then I'm going to yell at my boss for right. apologize. Immediately after. And then I'm going to get knocked out. Don't f- <laughs> Yeah, don't fuck up the bag and get knocked out. Yes. Like Corey Anderson story. Take the Jared Cannonier route. Yeah. Just be quiet and kill everyone in front. Yeah. Jared Cannonier was like fighting at two hundred five and killing people there, and then he's like, "These guys are really big. I'm (laughs) I'm five seven. (laughs) Sir, I'm tired." Yeah. And then he went down to one eighty five. He's like, "This is way easier." Yeah. Also, like once you get to the top of two hundred five, like is that where you want? Is that the smoke you want? Being five seven. No. Can you imagine if he they gave him a shot against John Jones? Which is funny because he looks enormous. Yeah, because he's, like, wide. Jared Cannonier looks like an enormous creature. He's like a tank. And I would have never guessed he was 5'7". He looks like he's a, an anime fighter. Kind of, yeah. It, it's scary. Like, I wonder how many women are like, I think I might fuck Jared Cannonier. Yeah. And then they see the the height in the little box. And yeah, like, wait a minute. Must be five. I'm like he, he's like he'll kill anyone above and below his weight mm-hmm. and our height. Uh, height. It's he, he look like he's it's unnat. Like when I first saw him, I'm like, how's he 185 pounds? How? Yeah. There's no way he's 185 pounds. He's like he he's 185 pounds for three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like when he gets on the scale. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't like suffer too bad to get down to 185. No, I guess he doesn't he, look horrible. He, I guess he has the the system. Yeah. Down, but like he's like anything to beat these. Fighting these six six guys at two oh five. No, fair. All these all Fuck these definitely that. all these definite heavyweights. Yeah, all these guys were definitely heavyweight. Yeah, um yeah, like shouts up to Jerry Kenny because he's fucking scary as shit. He looks like a fucking like a superhero in Django. <laughs> he has no haircut. <laughs> <laughs> he's just you run away slave massive, looking. Massive scary man. Uh so I've been thinking about this a lot. I don't know who wins this fight between Bonna, Felder I think Dan Hooker beats Dan Hooker. Because um, Dan Hooker is kind of just a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. Yes. His grappling is fine. When was the last time you saw Paul Felder use jiu-jitsu? I haven't, ever. But I'm saying, like, if he wanted an advantage, that would be it. But like then I'm thinking, Dan Hooker doesn't care about an advantage. He wants to stand in front of you and be like for Auckland and punch you in the face. Yes. Um, I think Dan Hooker's going to win um, because I think it's just going to come down to who's the toughest. Mm-hmm. Past this, but not necessarily who's the toughest, but um, what intangibles are you going to have to override someone's toughness? Because they're both equally tough, 
Well, the intangibles is Dan Hooker's huge. That's what I'm saying. In comparison to Paul yeah, Fuller. Yeah, Paul Fuller's 5'9", Dan Hooker's 6 foot. 5-inch reach advantage. Dan Hooker is known for the knees, so he doesn't have to reach very high to knee him in the head. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul Felder is a monster inside, so maybe that gives him a little bit of, like, advantage over the clinch. Because he might be, he, he probably is way stronger than Dan Hooker is, mm-hmm. by a lot. People said they see him walk around in, like, you know, South Jersey and Philadelphia at, like, 215 pounds. Like, it looks like he's, like, a little gorilla. Um, he's got a lot of time. To re- he's had a, he's had a lot of time to prepare for this fight. He hasn't fought anyone in a little bit. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be well prepared. Um, but Dan, so that's Dan Hooker. And I just think Dan Hooker is coming off a little bit of, like, a, bat, a poor streak. Because I think he lost. Didn't he lose his last fight? I don't know if it was his last one or the one before that. 2019, he lost a decision to Ally Quinta. So I guess that kind of cancels the, the 5 9 thing. Um, and before that, he KO'd uh, James Vick. Paul Felder, what, did, what, did, what has Paul Felder done? He's 35 years old, too. Keep that in mind. Uh, Paul I mean, Felder he has lost to Edson Barbosa. With a, with a particular. You don't, he doesn't look like a person that's like. Past MMA prime. No. What he fights so. though. No. Because he also made it pretty late. He spaces it out pretty good. Yeah. You know? Like, he doesn't fight a lot per year. He fought once last year. He fought once in 2018. He fought three times in 2017. He fought three times. So, like, all of his fight a lot of times. Days are behind ago. him. Yeah. Um, which is yeah, wise because, like, if he's, if he's trending upwards, which he has been, like, Maybe you don't need to kill yourself to get there. Right. Like, maybe, I mean, he is from, he's in Cerrone's camp, one of his good friends, but, like, he doesn't have the same, I just want to be out here fucking people in the face. Well, the other thing is, like, he's... Maybe he does want to be a champion. Yeah, he's also, yeah, he's also successfully transitioned himself, I think, right out of fighting, which is what you do when you're 35. Right. But he's like, I'll still take these big fights. I'll take big fights and I'll fight big in them, but I know I can't... Do these stand in Bangalore for three rounds no, forever? It's not happening. Maybe not even for very long in front of this. But I need to learn. I also need to like remember. I need to learn how to speak. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Articulately in front of a camera and look well, good in the suit. He's like, so, I'm like, as good as I'm gonna be. He's like, if you give, you guys are these fuck faces from Boston do all this dumb shit, then I'm gonna be the other right. fuck face from. Philly. Which I respect. It's yeah. it's very important to know yeah. like your limits. And yeah. I'm glad he got here and knows and knows them. I think as far as like I think that's a a good sort of through line to um and Paul like a, a hooker fight because I like what is what is what is Dan Hooker's like limits like what what exactly is Dan Hooker's future look like even if he does beat Paul Felder he'll fight Wale <laughs> finally yeah the other the other beef yeah um he's ranked in the top 15 I'm pretty sure is he I mean I probably because how many other fucking lightweights are there? I don't there's know. a lot I mean, that's what I mean, but how many of them are relevant? Like, I feel like I you can name 30 lightweights. I don't know how many of them are, like, ranked. Well, well, Dan Hooker fights with Israel Adesanya, and he's successful in that camp. And it looks like they've been giving that camp a lot of good PR. Mm-hmm. So, I think any... Because now, after this fight, he'll be a household name, at least on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. So, after this fight, if he wins, he might get, like, a pretty good deal after that to fight someone else who's just as good. It's not going to be a title shot, but it might right. be a top five guy, mm-hmm. you know? Um, that's fight. probably in the future for whoever wins this fight. Right, right. I think that's what they're ramping this fight up to, to be. Like, this it's is a, definitely like that gatekeeper match. Yeah, I think this is the fight for the number one contender spot for sure, or at least for a look at a, whoever the number one contender might end up being. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, stylistically, is it, is pretty good. Like, I think one of these guys is going to fight Justin Gaethje. That sounds right. Because Justin Gaethje's been fucking dead silent. Mm-hmm. But look, I think he's been and looking both... for a. Maybe he's. Been, I don't know if he's actually looking, but this is a perfect opportunity to jump on like a wave. Yeah. That would get him back in the talk again. Right. Um, because if Paul Felder moves forward and fights Justin Gaethje, Justin Gaethje undifferently wins that. But that's that is a fight that people know it's it's just no one's wrestling. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be a strike fest. People but that's also a fight that's interesting because, like, what if Justin Gaethje doesn't win? Yeah, what if Paul like, what Felder if Paul wins? Felder like hits a wild overhand and then suddenly things have changed? Yeah, like even if it doesn't turn into, maybe it ends in decision. But like, yeah. that's this is a fight that has like the perfect opportunity to be unpredictable, which is like what the UFC is like craving. Right. 
It could also just be like he gets stuffed. It could also be just a throwaway. Like, <laughs> we, have, we have we have we have no <laughs> we have of anyone. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have anyone doing anything. We just want to fight. But I'm into it either way. Yeah, I like the fight. Um, I don't think there's anyone else on that card that matters. No, like so, again, Kawakawik might win. I don't know if I'm yeah, who cares? Else. Because like even if she wins, so what? <laughs> That's the thing. Like I'm a fan, but like who gives a shit? Yeah, really. Like I'll watch the fight, but I'm like I don't care. I'm not invested in the story. I'm invested in what's going to be produced out of the fight. Right. That's about it. Right. Um. And then, so that leads me to, like, the only other fight thing that I can think of, which is uh, Deontay Wilder fights, fighting Tyson Fury this Saturday. Finally. Yes. Finally, they can work, the this, they can work this out. The long-awaited. Uh, uh, if it, if... I think this is the general consensus. If this goes the distance, Fury wins yes. by points. If it doesn't, then it's because Fury has been knocked out. By, yes. by, by and I, and I don't think Deontay Wilder is going to accept not knocking out Tyson Fury this week. He's done it to just about everyone else. Like, so. And he knocked Fury down. He stumbled him a couple times. He knocked him the fuck down twice. I will say he knocked him out because he did. Um, uh, that's that second one. Yeah, no, no, the first one was the knockout, right? And then the second one. Well, was the yeah, down. the first one was like he's on his back, he's out, <laughs> and the ref was like. One, <laughs> two, like he just like he get he they someone did the, the time him hitting the canvas and then starting the count, the count was like thirteen seconds yeah. <laughs> on a ten count. That yes, and out. Tyson Fury has rode this to, like, a level of stardom that I didn't think was possible for a white heavyweight boxer. I love it. I lo- listen. But he's like, two listen. of the best two boxers in the world, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, like... Also, I'm a casual boxing fan, but... Fair, fair. <laughs> but... There are probably more technical heavyweights, yeah. but I don't want to watch them. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not even just that. It's like, okay, line your favorite boxer up against them and see what happens. Like, they've beat everybody in their path for the whole time they've been boxing. I get... Listen, Floyd Mayweather, everyone's like, Floyd is, like, the best defensive boxer of all time, and I think he very well might, might be, because he's done what he's done to everybody in mm-hmm. their prime, after their prime, in the middle of... There's their no one who rise. fights almost 50 times and does this almost reliably the same thing to all of them. On, on an international <clears throat> stage. It, it's not just... Yeah. It's not just them beating up regional guys. It's them going to other people's countries and beating them in their countries. Mm-hmm. Um, and I measure that... With like, I think the the big conversation was Joshua for a long time, mm-hmm. then Wilder with his rise, and then Fury coming off the couch, four hundred pounds, <laughs> cheeseburger, <laughs> um, and then getting, and then that was the carousel, and then Ruiz knocks down Joshua off that pedestal, um, and it, for like a second, yeah. And then Joshua comes back and just demolishes. And then really because Ruiz, Ruiz is like, I I I beat Anthony Joshua. Let yeah. me go on a fucking killing spree. Yeah. Well, he's set. Yeah, because he, he only needed. That it was win. a win-win. He already won. Yeah. what he won the first time. Right, he won every time. Yeah, after that. so it doesn't matter if Joshua. Beats he got him the bag in the rematch. It doesn't really matter. He didn't hit him that much either, too. Like he was like respecting Ruiz's power. Like mm-hmm. he wasn't like he, before. He, yeah, he had no respect for, and and then Ruiz didn't want smoke because yeah. he wasn't going to fight a angry, upset, vengeful Andy right. Joshua right. ever, right. which is a great idea. Right. Um. Um. But yeah, no one's no one stopped talking about Deontay Wilder's the way we always did, which is like, this is a man who at any point can knock you out with one punch. And, it's and not, wants to. And like, it's not, not lip service. Like, that's his alt. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, like, this is what he, he does. the bar fill, he, <laughs> he does that every single time. It doesn't matter who it is. It, it doesn't it matter which free. hand. Yeah. He'll wait you out yeah. for three rounds and knock, you, knock the shit. I re- and it's like, the this is like a movie. This is like a movie like that we're watching. It really is. This is like, a, it's like Sylvester Stallone wrote this. Like, like exactly. Like, like, their styles couldn't be more, like, polarizing. Like, mm. one is like the, he's not the best boxer, but he's freakishly athletic and he's freakishly strong. He's 6'9", but he's somehow 215 pounds. Don't know how yeah, that works out. Yeah, don't get it. <laughs> Um, and, 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 uh, and then Fury is, like, this guy who, like, like, there's, like, this Ben Affleck movie coming out where he's, like, an alcoholic coach, <laughs> but he's good at it, like. The only thing I can do and don't fuck up is, is coach. Is coach these basketball kids. Um, and, and, uh, Fury got that whole crazy shit about him, about him being And Fury's another guy who doesn't look like 
be athlete that he is. No. But then you watch his head movement. And you're it's like, I don't understand how he can see it's the things insane. happening in front of him so quickly and react so quickly. Well, that's why I say they're the best right now because they both remind me. They give, they both give me qualities of like some of the best that people herald as the best, right? Like Mike Tyson, people say he's one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. People argue that the people he fought weren't necessarily in the caliber of Muhammad Ali and all that stuff. But if you look at what made those guys the best, right? Like Deontay Wilder is arguably better than Mike Tyson in terms of technique and like I don't know strong. if he's a better technician but as Maybe far as strength technician. at any at, with any punch yeah. like t- Tyson's strength was like he got very close so that all his close range hooks and stuff right. with all his power punches would hit right and then he was so elusive that you couldn't see him moving to a blind spot yeah, and hit yeah, you yeah. with one again yeah where Wilder can hit a power punch like like a tall man's like hook which is mm. not a one of these it's more it's like one of these so far but it's still with so much knockout power that yeah. like he's hitting you like Tyson would but without having to get to Tyson distance uh, uh, yeah he's doing what Tyson would from a uh, skyscraper yeah, from downtown yeah yeah um and that's what makes him so scary Where, and then you look at guy, a guy like Fairley and that's what I was gonna that was gonna be my point too is like his head movement is like unreal yeah For, and then you, can, you, you would look at him and be like this dude can't move possible. anything quickly it's in not his possible body. you don't think it's possible you look at the way his body's made you know what I mean? He's but got, the he's way, got no ass. like, basically right up here, yeah. this moves in ways I never thought could. Like he moves. Like, like if he had a big ass, I'd be like, and like really strong legs, I'd be like, okay, I can see. Yeah, how he's the planted. Game. Here's yeah. the no. He's no, just kind he's of a, just he's a slippery and like, like a weird. Gumby. He is like Gumby. He's, he's like, like Gumby. one of those like fucking tube dudes selling yeah. like used cars. <laughs> That's how he's dodging <laughs> punches. Um, but and it's not just those things. It's like their and their brains are very. Re- re- have like again like people attack De- if you watch Deontay Wilder and you're a fucking nut boxing guy and you're like oh it's not perfect his jab isn't blah 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 who cares look at him fight and then look at him make adjustments on the move to to not taking full punches to mm-hmm. the face the, the, it's, they both make adjustments like they go back to their corner they tell them what they see and they make the adjustments on the fly against the best boxers on the planet that was Chuck Liddell's like hidden strength like yeah. maybe not his corner but he himself kind of made adjustments very well in the middle of a fight like mm. he didn't have the cleanest punches or the mm. cleanest kicks no um, he had really good wrestling but he never used it he used it to counter wrestle but yeah. he could make adjustments for himself on the fly like mm. and if you watch him from the beginning of a round to an end of a round especially like the first two before he's gassed basically mm. Like you can, you can watch him like download the opponent and figure out where to put his left right. hook because right. he's he's watching himself miss and then doing like the calculus almost. And like I don't know how good of a coach he is. He might not be a person that can express and like teach someone else how to do this. It might just be a gear in his brain. But yeah, there's just something about the way Chuck Liddell's head works yeah. where you can watch him figure out like see shit in 3D in the fucking Matrix and figure it out in a second. And, and, like, you go back and you watch Deontay fight, and that's, like, it, what it looks like that's what he's doing. It looks like he's getting bested in certain aspects of boxing, mm-hmm. and then he's like, okay, I'm just going to be patient, and I'm going to weather the he storm. Doesn't have to, he knows he doesn't have to be a better boxer. Yeah. He has to know what you're going to do and know when he can do what he right. wants to do. He said, and, he's, and, the, and, by the way, these two guys are some of the best guys to watch do interviews because they're so good on the mic. One of the favorite quotes that I have from Deontay Wilder is that, like, you have to be perfect for however many minutes in a boxing match. So if there's, like, 12 rounds and they're all three minutes or whatever mm. it is, or 16 rounds, it's like, you have to be perfect for 40 minutes. I have to be perfect for one second. And it's, like, the perfect sum up of his style is, like, he only needs that small window. Mm. He's just got to see that window where he can reach you, and then he's going to get yeah, I don't. You can be the there. better boxer for every minute in a fight. Yeah. I just need to hit you with one of my... The hand you know I that you know that yeah. I can kill you with, and that's exactly what we saw in that first fight with Fury and Wilder. Mm. Like Fury was pit was fucking batting a thousand. Like yes. he was like he was other than those two knockdowns, he was out striking him. He was doing damage, um, and he, even late in the fight, he was still moving pretty well. Right, like right, he was still moving very well, and then um, you know, and I think Fury took him very, 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 very seriously. Mm. But I don't think it mattered. I think that was as focused as we're going to see Fury going to get. Like, okay, maybe he'll be a little bit more focused in his training. And, you know, maybe he's got... Maybe keep his hands up a little higher. Right, right, right. Well, I, I don't even think that was the problem. Because it, it, you can see that in slow motion. Like, in slow motion, everything was, well, this is exactly what you need to fix. In the moment when he's, like, reacting and that herky-jerky style, like, he, th- that might have been the only reason why he was able well, to... Well, yeah, I think the problem all. was he thought he was going to do one of these and one yeah, of these. And yeah. like, that's not exactly... That's <laughs> definitely not what's going to happen. Right, right. 
And I just think there's no way for you to possibly train for somebody who as, is as big as you are like that and as strong as you are. There's no Fair. way to prepare your brain for <clears throat> Especially if you go in assuming you're going to be hit at least once or twice. Right. Like what, right. Someone like that, like getting hit twice is enough. You need to carbon copy Wilder on a robot and box him every day because for you to replicate what he sees, that's impossible because yeah. that's what Wilder saw. Wilder was almost completely reactionary and he's not hes not always reactionary. Sometimes he's always the guy that presses forward mm. um, and, and he doesn't really fight off his back foot like at all. But like Fury was showing him a look and Wilder was re- was responding. He's like, he was counter punching in that way and then vice versa. So it's like that their styles together as as I guess as technically strong sound as Fury is, it was unpredictable because of that herky jerky style. And then Wilder was like counter punching, so it's not always going to be predictable. Mm. So like, if you show him a look, he's a good enough athlete to close that distance anyway, despite whether your hands are up or not. Mm. So you know, I think he just caught him in that one second of failure. <laughs> so that's all that matters. And those two seconds of failure. And the two seconds of failure that was almost destined to happen. Because yeah. you can't be perfect all you the can't. time. You can't. And a lot of good boxers, even like Mayweather, who like you said, is one of the best defensive boxers ever. Yeah. Even he gets hit. But Not very clean. McGregor did it. Yeah, you know, McGregor hit him. And like, I, that, some of that might have been because like, by design, he didn't Robert actually Dope. think McGregor was going to hurt him when he yeah. got hit, or he didn't think he would be able to hit him, and then right. he had to get serious afterwards. Yeah. Um, or just wasn't concerned about the His power. He knew that McGregor wasn't going to step in and throw five pieces. He right. was going to hit him. He's going to throw one or one z two z's and hit you with one of them. Maybe and he was from going the to weird, press from the back clinch that you're not allowed to do. In yeah, boxing. <laughs> at all. At he, all. There was no way McGregor was going to hit him with like a flurry right. of punches. And that and, was and but, that's part of by design. In MMA, you're able to grab people and blast through your target. Mm-hmm. In boxing, you have to. You have like a half of a second to do that. Or and there's like a there's a there's a almost like a an order of operations to getting to your target. Right. Like you can strike out here, then you can step in and try to strike with the, but when right. you're stepping in, you have to transition to like a standing clinch or a takedown. Like right. there are, there are different things to do on your way into a, exactly. a fighter where in boxing that you kind of step and throw and leave. And right. that's kind of it. That's and the if, rhythm of a fight. And you don't, really get unless you're like sprinting away from your target literally like they don't call you for like stalling fights but, <laughs> like, like, like they you kind can, of you can recognize that like this is kind of the there's a different rhythm in these fights like, right like even like your Otoro Gatti's were like not necessarily always running you at the tissue in your hand while my nose real quick uh, <laughs> not in here I mean there's a paper towel over there. let's see one real quick but um that's an interesting fight um do you, are you gonna make a which one call it? A prediction? Um, no. It's not an idiot. <laughs> Is that how you've broken it down? Yeah. I don't. It really like it, as far yeah, as either one of them can win because we're looking at the number one versus the number one right now. I can't think concerned. of another fight that has been more. Not even, but like, I can't think of a fight with it where, where the outcome would make like perfect sense either way, like this, in a long time. Like we just said, like Hooker Felder would be like, like a good fight, but yeah. I think we both believe like Dan Hooker probably would. I fight. think yeah, um, even if it's just by points, right? But like, I can't like. It would all be. I think I wanted guessing. to assume Mayweather, um, Pacquiao would be something like this today. Maybe not today. I think when it happened, I thought this this was the this is the oh. fucking go either way, and it would make well, a lot, make a lot of sense about, either way. They're thinking about, about it again, yeah. but in reality, I think that that's that's a fight that's overwhelming either way, and not necessarily even. Like I don't think that fight was even when it happened. Pacquiao was quote unquote hurt, but yeah, he had like a torn labrum or something. Really, sure. like incredibly, and and that's why he lost because he couldn't he couldn't be like the incredibly offensive punch thrower that he is which is why that fight looked weird but on paper it's a very aggressive dude versus a very defensive dude so yeah. like that fight ends either a dude gets beat the fuck up with flurries of punches that overwhelm the defense or mm-hmm. he never gets touched and it's one sided either way well I think that's what the sexy appeal is about this fight is like I think the difference though there's like offensive and defensive there is like such a compelling sort of through line for every round though because we all know that it only takes a couple seconds for Wilder to get close and make contact to like to end this fight so even like from round 1 to round 15 we know at any point so long as Wilder found himself a path in 
it could be over. Yeah. I think if Walter was smart, he's found a way to also cut angles better. Mm -hmm. Like, this is where learning from Tyson would be great. Mm -hmm. Because if he can stop throwing his big power punches from right in front of you and find a way to convince a power punch is happening here, take a step to the side, like, really do some wheeling, like, he's 100 pounds smaller... That's where the that's where his power is super valuable because Tyson Fury is very good at watching your punches come from sixty inches away and then move his head away from them and then mm -hmm. counter punch with his like incredible reach. Yeah. But if you can just get in a blind spot and then land one of those fucking nuclear punches, like that's it. That's all he needs. That's all he needs, and it like throwing them from in front of him is like a mistake. What if the same thing happens again though? Like, what are they just gonna keep having draws? Like, you know, yeah, what I, mean? I wonder like, because because that fight was like if you. As much as I think Deontay Wilder knocked him out, mm -hmm. right? The reality of the situation is the count was longer and Fury got up. Fury technically won mm -hmm. through a boxing standpoint. Now, mm -hmm. I appreciate what the judges are saying. Objectively, he lost in, certain, in one, at least one of the judges' eyes because he got put out and because he got being knocked, knocked out. out or knocked down and being convincingly like knocked down long enough to lose a fight yeah. is like enough to lose this fight right. like, even in a, even on a judge's card right and then one person saw that and was like who really <laughs> won <laughs> no one really won what if that happens yeah, again who can say yeah. I, I don't know and I think that's why this three <laughs> really is like one of the most compelling boxing matches I, yeah. I can remember yeah um I think I think I remember being super compelled by like Lewis Tyson, but like because their style is so weird. But they had never had this legacy of like fighting. I mean, they fought some of the same opponents, but like their styles were so different than than each other's. And you can kind of like you can kind of game it. But now with these, the way the styles are, and also if you've already seen one of these, like it's very difficult to like know what the fuck's going to happen right. in this fight. Like, are, is anyone gonna make any adjustments at all? They're just gonna go out and do their same shit. These are like two dudes who's gonna do the same shit because what? They, I mean, they're in their mid thirties. These like, are the styles that got him here. What? Like why? Because like Fury won and Wilder won, so that's why. Right. So job. like Fury, I don't know that Fury's incentivized to win faster. I think the only thing like, that Fury that I can know that he's changed is that like he's like way more direct about his shit talking. He's like, I'm gonna knock you out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone's like, what? I go. I mean, that is possible. Like he's got like fifty <laughs> wins and like twenty of them are knockouts, so he's still got knockout power. Right. But that's. I just don't see him standing in the box with him. Because if you want to stand and get into, I think that's got to be a punching mental. fights. That's got to be mental. Dante Wilder. That's yeah. a fucking mistake. Yeah. Because I think he's just gonna goat him into like some weird brawl type. But here's the thing. That's when he's dangerous too. Like you can't if you get him just swinging like for the fences like mm -hmm. and you're standing there like. Oh, I got hit a couple times. Yeah. Real good in, yeah. the, in the last fight. Yeah, he did. Uh, so I'm. I yeah. will say this though, and watching both of their fights lead because the both both Wilder and Fury had fights uh, leading up to this fight. Mm -hmm. uh, one was for the lineal championship for Fury, and he fought some Russian dude. I think he was Russian. Anyway, that guy was really good, mm -hmm. and they opened up Fury's face like a cantaloupe. Like he was just huge. Like his eyebrow. Like people were like the Diaz and um, Jorge Masvidal fight. Everyone was like. Um, either half the people were like early stoppage or, or half the people were like we've seen way worse on Diaz before and then it was like they're like, it still it looked bad but I erred more on the side of like let Diaz fight that out mm -hmm. um, but I understand why they made the call that cut that Fury had in his last day which no one talked about was worse than that cut it was like over the brow like it was very clear the promotion was trying to save him mm -hmm. like the victory to keep the, the thing going like cause that guy was like Really close. I think Fury ended up out boxing him like by a small margin, but um, that fight, the cut over the eye, like I've seen so many fights stop for less. So mm -hmm. so so it was like so so Fury took a lot of damage from someone who was relatively unknown in the boxing world, mm -hmm. at least to the casual fan, mm -hmm. which is myself. Wilder's fight against um, he had two fights. I think. he had two fights. Yeah, yeah. He, had, he had the he had the. I mean, he lost, so he he was very intent on getting back in the business. And, right. Doing the work. What was that guy? And name? Fury Luis? took a a break to go like not do wrestling to I think. heal that scar over his face, and then he yeah. did wrestling, uh, the WWE. But um, Wilder um, fought twice, and they were both convincing knockout victories. Mm -hmm. So, if you're looking at who's depreciating over time, objectively, Fury looked to take it the mo most Maybe, damage out of that. Maybe, but I think really Wilder knocking someone out 
convincingly is like kind of been his whole career. So he, he got kind of went back to doing what he always does. But it's not a good look for Fury, who um, who lost by a slim margin and got someone, super injured. That right. Way, yeah. So who, people people who had no idea who that guy was, and it was real close. Like it was uncomfortably close. If you're looking at it, like at, well, this is supposed to be the guy that goes in there and and be untouched by Wilder for. 30 minutes? Yeah, fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so, um, that could have been any number of reasons. Maybe he wasn't, like, focused completely. Yeah, that could have been a preparation thing, though. Like, yeah. he, he, this dude is just a guy I've never heard of before, yeah. so we'll watch some tape and we'll figure right. it out. But, right. like... And, is, and, listen, he came and he geared himself to win and he definitely won. Like, mm-hmm. if you go back and you, like, count up the punches, he definitely outstruck him. But, um, he got a little lucky with the refs and, and the ref in the way that, like, they didn't call that fight early because of that cut. Yes. Um... But if he took that much punishment from Wilder, do you think he'd be standing? No, that guy wasn't as strong as Wilder is. If he, if Wilder landed thirty punches on him, it would be half of those would be on a corpse. Like, you yeah, know what really, I mean? like, like, like um, you wouldn't have gotten the cut, right? It wouldn't have even gotten that far, or his face would have exploded or something. Um, so, if you're looking at a recent body of work, you know, and you're grading somebody, I think Wilder's edge would be he performed. Just as well as he's done before against anyone else, mm-hmm. whereas Fury has performed not as well as all those other guys. Doesn't remember him before yeah. this fight? Yeah, that's fair. Um, but other than that, it's still anyone's fight. And this is like what good boxing is if you're just like into violence, yeah. because <laughs> we're gonna see. It's not gonna be a lot of running around and everything. No, I mean it. No, it won't be because Fury doesn't Fury allow that. Isn't necessarily Fury's. Game yeah. is getting you thinking you're just close enough. Yeah, when you exactly, are. but exactly. he has to also be close enough to counterpunch. So right. he can't just be running around necessarily. He doesn't want to hit you. He doesn't want to shell for well, for five rounds. He necessarily. hasn't. He hasn't been granted the luxury slash also hasn't gotten that far in fighting off his back foot. He hasn't have to done it. He hasn't yeah. have has have he hasn't yeah. have had to have done that. Um, as a result, like we don't know what he's looked like running because he doesn't run. So, so like like he'll take some punishment and he's real tough and that, and his and his toughness can never be questioned. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's like he like you said he's really good at making you think you're landing really well mm-hmm. just to that it's exactly what he did to the last guys yeah. the Ortiz guy exactly yes. what he did. Um, the first time they fought it was really close and then he knocked him out and the second one it was the same thing and that guy had a really good game plan and he was really out about too bad <laughs> no, <laughs> didn't matter <laughs> didn't matter um, that guy was well prepared I mean he's 45 or whatever he is but he looked really good he looked strong he looked quick um, and he was out pointing him back out yeah. doesn't matter didn't matter doesn't matter points don't matter when you get off the fucking okay. exactly and that's how we have a lot of people imagine this um, going forward and I feel like that, you know that's like one of the dog whistles they do for Wilder is like he's not a good boxer and it's like okay <laughs> so what and like what is a good boxer yeah though? like yeah the same people who are like uh, what was that point I made before where it's like who's making like the rules for for, for what's a what's a robbery or not yeah. it's like those same people <laughs> are doing the same thing here it's like you know he's not a good boxer right like if you're, if you're winning belts and knocking people the fuck out like how aren't you a almost good boxer almost all of them you know, I think there's like, like one fight that wasn't a knockout and like, what's a good boss would look like? Yeah. He keeps his, he keeps his hands uh, yeah. up here at his brows. And right. He's so what? Only throw he throws three pieces and he, he throws his hook like this. He's like, really good at at least one part of boxing. Yeah, like <laughs> he's, he's been good at the part of boxing that matters. Yeah. Then he's really good at that part. boxing. Yeah. Like it's strange. It's like it's like a weird like you know. They, those are the same people that would say Muhammad Ali is not a good boxer. Yeah, I don't understand. Because Muhammad Ali didn't fight with his hands up. He, yeah. His hands were down here most yeah. of the time, and he's just running around the ring basically to get you upset, and then he'll fight you. Dog whistles, man. Like, right, like <laughs> this is black athletes. These are the same this. people that would that would if he was if he was boxing the, the way he boxes today, yeah. they would say he's a bad boxer. Yeah, and it's like Fury doesn't isn't the most fundamentally sound guy all the time. No, like he's always more fundamentally sound than his opponents, but like he does the rope a dope crazy hand slow thing yeah. too. He's running around like an idiot too. And yeah. you're like you don't you know, you can go to a boxing school for six months and they'll teach right. you to do nothing like what Tyson it's, Fury's doing. No, no one will advise you. He is a phenomenal athlete and he's so confident in his skill that he's able to yeah. do things. No one's gonna tell Tyson Fury to stop doing that right. because right. he it's this has been working. That's, for that's him. what's got him to where he's right. at today. Like you shouldn't do it. Yeah general don't. listener and viewer you don't don't do yeah. that but like don't tell him not right. to do it and don't call him a bad boxer because right. he's doing it because that's clearly not true right like there are definite elements that you know i i can't, I can't critique wilder because he's been so successful doing exactly what he's doing no one can like you can't like 
Well, it's, I think the thing the problem is it's more cerebral than it looks, right? People yeah. want him to look like a boxer, a boxer, but like a, but people forget boxer. all the all the work his brain is doing to make sure he knocks out like ninety five percent of the people I, he fights. I really think they think like he's not thinking in there. Like, he's they, just throwing punches yeah, and, it, yeah. and then it just works out every right, time, like right. which is probably true. It people, could they're be. not they're not. People are not accepting that maybe he's doing way more cerebral thinking exactly. about this fight than you think he is. Exactly. But you hear him speak and you're like, how could you not think he's as intelligent as we think he is? Like, it doesn't right. make any... Well, I don't know why. Racism. <laughs> he's <is> black. <laughs> well, that's why. Um, but it's like, no one... Like, when Ruslan Provodnikov was fighting, like, a thousand times worse, no yeah. one was like, he's No one was curious boxer. about him being a bad boxer. Yeah. No one was worried about yeah. like like his analysts were like he's a bad boxer because like he'd come with a, a a face like um like what was it Cher in that movie where she had that prosthetic face on <laughs> every, fight, every fight mask she every fight he looked like a worse version of mask yeah <laughs> and like standing over the, like a bloody corpse or something like like right. Timothy Bradley fought him and Timothy is like I had to give an arm and a leg to like stand there with mm-hmm. him but he won because he was the better boxer right like that's not how Wilder's winning like he's not getting battered to death and he's just taking and he's not thinking he's just taking he's just balling himself up like a pit bull and just taking damage and then just getting it back when he finds like tired when the person's tired from beating him half to death like he's yeah, ha- like, he, like he is openings. he is finding an opportunity in rounds two three four five that you just that someone has been too good a boxer yeah. and forgot about this one thing they're not doing yeah. and he found it he found a way around it and knocked right. him the fuck out like, exactly that is a really good boxer too people yeah. forget yeah, like, like you don't have to throw the most punches yeah. or throw the best, the prettiest looking punches. But if right. you know what they're going to do right. and you do it better than, or you do it before they do it, then that's good boxing too. Exactly. Clearly. Like, yeah, clearly, because results, because results matter. Yeah, like there's so there's people who are just as freakishly strong as Deontay Wilder is, but that nearly as talented. Right. So, um, it's unfair to like not give. Like I'm not saying like. Fury is like so like it's not Fury's fault. Mm-hmm. Like Fury is gonna say whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. Like Fury is like I'm the better boxer. Okay, like on paper you're the better boxer, but like that didn't matter when you got knocked down, right? Right. So like you know like those are the real co- and and they, you know those are the real conversations. But, uh, Fury also have. knows like let me give he understands what the commentators and talking heads are saying, right? Which is the same thing, right? Like he's a better boxer, he, right? He knows the fundamentals better, or right? Whatever. So. If I'm a, I'm a dude trying to hype my own fight, like I'm going to, of course, I'm, I'm going to jump on the people who I'm going like to jump on the same wave like, everybody, all the all the right. media is talking about, so right. I can get that SEO. People are googling, and I'm saying the right. same things. But fucking why, Max Kellerman but, are saying or whatever, like. But Fury fucking knows how da- like he knows how obviously he knows how dangerous he is. Yeah, he he's he's been there, he's felt it, you know. So it's like it doesn't matter. You don't have to be the best. Yeah, and um. You know, because he hasn't really changed his style. Like, because, like, you can only gear for athleticism for so long. <laughs> like, what can you do? Like, you can't yeah. learn that. Like, right. You just have to be equally as good or as athletic. Mm-hmm. And I think there is an enormous amount of skill in what uh, Deontay Wilder does. And I just don't think it's being recognized because of his unorthodox style, which is, like, I know three punches, but I'll time it whenever you have openings that mm-hmm. I can find in your boxing. Because you're so stuck in this box of boxing. Like... Right. Box of boxing. <laughs> You're so stuck in this box of boxing. Um, that and, and a lot of these people are the same people who thought Conor McGregor had a shot. That's also true. That's a general vision I made, but I feel confident in saying that's true. Yeah. But those same people willed him through fighting Donald Cerrone, so shout out to them. Fair. Fair. There, I heard um, this time around when he fought Cerrone, like the, like the waves of people were like not nearly as out in effect. Like the McGregor, Irish everyone had the chill. Everyone yeah. had the chill a bit. No one wanted yeah. to be out here. Yeah, they and just then... want to test the water. Get... <laughs> now they're gonna be out. For Yo, oh text. man, if he comes but... back for Khabib, yeah, 100%. unless unless it's in Russia, because if it's in Russia, you know what's really funny. Dana's like, I don't want to do that in Russia, and it's not. And he's being so, and he's not. And he's being so transparent. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm not doing this as like a promotion thing. It's like we're not gonna make any money. <laughs> like, no. we're, like, why would I do that there? No, I have to partner with the mob there yeah. and like oligarchs. Why yeah, the fuck would I do that? Yeah. Yeah. At the parade of like Muslim Jesus. Like, yeah. what would I do that? And Connor has the audacity to be like, how much money is too much money? And they're like, okay, why don't you pay for it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's getting, he's getting, uh, percentages now. Like, yeah. you pay for it. Yeah. I just think that was for his brother. Imagine Connor McGregor pays for it and then he loses anyway. That'd be uh, hilarious. Beautiful. Yeah. Be worth it. Sponsored by Proper 12. Sponsored by Proper 12. Yeah. Um,. Let's see if I missed anything on my list of stuff. I don't know that there's been any... Oh, last 
two things. Okay. Uh, do you see Usman in Jorge Masvidal? No. I've read everything about it afterwards. But you so didn't see it, I no. didn't see it, no. It was, um... It was, it was like, you remember in South Park um, when Randy's dad finds the other dad in the bar? He's like, sup, bro? Yeah. Sup? It was just that. Oh, sup, and they were, they, were, they were fighting. They, they were, the what was what was the event there? Why disrespecting me, bro? I don't know what it is, but it was like around. But I saw like Usman like took, like. Oh, like. I, gave like, his hat to someone. It was, it was the, there was, it was um because the Super Bowl was in Miami. It was Super Bowl. So it was right. like Super Bowl coverage of that movie. Yeah, and they saw each other online or some shit. Yeah, and, yeah. Jorge, was problem, Jorge problem. was doing a thing, and uh, Usman was doing a thing, and they saw each other, and then, you know, they sold that fight. Um, so that, I mean, that kind of, like, indirectly or directly settles whether or not uh, McGregor is going to be fight his next fight's going to be in 170. I yeah. think it's going to be 155, because now everyone's like, well, now we really want to see that, because they're building that. that. They're building, I, there's a hype machine behind it now. But I wonder, like, what McGregor's role in deciding what that is is. Like, does he have like a fucking cork board and he's just drawing lines to figure out well, like, what the, where the money is? I think the clear and obvious things to see for him. I think the ne- I don't know who McGregor's going to fight next, but I do think it's going to be at one fifty five. And the simple fact that they're waiting to see what happens with Nurmagomedov and Tony Ferguson at one fifty five, and then I think the clear, distinct winner of that will maybe go on and fight Conor McGregor because that Cerrone McGregor fight was basically a one fifty five fight if mm-hmm. you think about it because they both fight at one fifty five. There's nothing to really gain for Cerrone to win there and in, in for like if Cerrone won. Like, he beat a 155er at 170. Yeah. If McGregor wins, he's a 155er who just beat a 170 guy. Mm. So it's like, I think that was just like an unofficial, like, 155 Which is count. weird because it, like that's not a fight they needed to have at 170. But, no. I mean. I thought it was strange too, but I was like, fuck it, let's go. Right, well, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think that happening and then this Usman, Jorge Masvidal thing happening in Miami where... It just kind of like that kind of to me. It had been rumors, and then they finally met, and they finally had some words to say to each other. And it was on TV, and everybody was there. It was like the perfect event to like put push that forward. And then like for almost two weeks straight, that was like the talk of the town. It was on the Ariel Hawani show. It was on the Joe Rogan podcast. It was on individual things. It was on Twitter. It was everywhere for two weeks hard that mm-hmm. they were running that story. And the UFC was like perfect. They've made that hype machine. That's there now. Kobe Covington is doing whatever now. Challenging Kobe 50 Cent to like a boxing fight. Yeah. Every week <laughs> someone wants to fight 50 Cent in boxing. Every Which, week. Fair. Because he's the most illustrious troll on the internet. I yeah. Think, and he makes himself very fightable. Well, yeah. But also, I think part of that is like he's 50 Cent's involved in the fight game. He's mm-hmm. got a stake in Bellator. So if his name has got attraction towards his... If his name's got attraction... T- towards it in the fight world and it becomes mainstream because he's 50 cent now his tv show sells more mm. and he gets a bunch of like awards for power and then now bellator stock goes up do people give power awards he got, he he was nominated for something for his tv show really? i don't know i don't know what if, i haven't if he seen won. it i have not seen it I've so never seen i'm TV throwing show. completely unsolicited un unqualified shade i heard it's power, good but i heard it's good i haven't seen minute one of power yeah but and I won't. I know that he proves his movies too. He and does. They, he had one where he had AIDS, and then he lost like a thousand pounds, and then everyone's like, "What the fuck is this movie?" And then the only thing that people remember about that movie is that like he got really into the role, and he lost all this weight, and no one saw the. <laughs> no one saw the <laughs> they know he prepared for it. No one watched him just for the one picture act. of him sunken in his bed. Because with, why would? Because in reality, why would you want to watch Fifty Cent act like that? Doesn't seem very cool. Like, what is a better use of your time, I promise right. you. His albums are better, guys. Listen to those. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so there was that. So I think uh, that'll be cool as a, as a fight for 170. But although I don't know what that really necessarily does for that division, um, because Usman is supposed to be, like, the guy, and Jorge Masvidal is, like, the cash fight now. So it's, like... I mean, it'll there people there decide, him, like, who gives a shit about... Who who the shit about whether Conor McGregor comes back or not? Because yeah. I feel like everybody wants that to be a Masvidal murder. I think people want Jorge Masvidal and Conor too, but at the same time, it's but like I don't know that that's going. To, I like, right. I think an Usman win is like very likely. Right. So like, is there a is is there a groundswell to watch McGregor? I mean, there might be a groundswell to watch McGregor fight anyone at yeah. this point for a title again. Right. Um, but like, 
is there as compelling because Usman doesn't give a shit about Conor McGregor, it seems like, right now. Yeah. Because um, Usman was like, I know I will beat anybody. Right. And, it's, <laughs> and, and we're all fairly confident he will, too. Because it's like, to me, Usman is just like a more athletic Khabib. Like, he's done exactly what Khabib has done to everybody in lightweight in uh, the 170 division for the most part. But it's like, he's way more athletic and he throws way more strikes and they're better. Yeah. So it's like, if he, I was like, that's and that's why I think that Conor will fight, go on to fight Khabib again, or Tony Ferguson at least, whoever wins that fight, because if he wins a fight against one of those two guys, it kind of puts the the bed. Well, well now he now he can he can fight a, a pretty good grappler, mm. and that sets up that Usman fight. If he, if Usman wins, because everyone thinks that Usman's gonna do the well, same maybe, thing. Well, maybe, but it, I guess the question is like, what's the priority for McGregor? Fighting big money. fights with big names for yeah. money, or fighting for the title? Because if, well, that's he's, what I'm saying. if he's fighting Usman for the title, I, I mean, money follows McGregor wherever he goes. Yeah. So it's going to be money either way. Right. But it's, but I think there's a a version of that fight where Usman is the one really making money because he'll never make more money than he will fighting Conor McGregor. That's facts. But there's real money, I think, for Conor McGregor in a rematch against Habib. And there's a lot of money in fighting Masvidal because there's already a history there. That's fast. Where it's just, Usman is again just like the merit based sort of, he's the best fighter in the world. And if yeah. that's what you want to go fight, then that's the guy you have to beat to do it. How many, like, Conor McGregor casual fans would give a fuck who he fights as long as he's fighting. Right. So, him being a, him winning the championship doesn't matter to anyone. If it doesn't matter, if it doesn't matter to McGregor, it doesn't matter to anyone. So, if I'm Conor McGregor, I remember that I do want to do other things in my life. I'm here for the bag so I can support those things. Um, maybe also maybe get, also, out from, get out from under the Irish mob or something. Whatever the fuck th- that saying. and like the weird like ogreish women he's cheating he's, he's on being wife he's with. being like Facebook lives with. Yeah. <laughs> um, do I just do I just go for what will be the talk of the decade, title or not, or am I here to fight for? these other these trophies like yeah. I, I don't know what, what compels McGregor on well, his comeback to fight besides money I know it's still the game that motivates him at least a little bit mm-hmm. because like he made it a thing like he's like my one of my goals was to get knockouts in three divisions that's mm-hmm. the first thing he said to Ariel Hawani when he was inside his his thing is like because uh, Ariel like kind of broke it and then he's like I don't want you to tell anybody but that was like one of my goals was mm-hmm. to get one of those three things and to me that lets me know that he's still interested in the game of fighting itself but he's also still interested in the awards and being able to say he's done these things that right. people haven't done or being the first person to do these things yeah like first double champion well I mean like the, yeah but that's that's the point I'm making is like he's using these as like achievement unlocks like you know well, what that's I mean, what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah. but like he's already like being the first double champion is almost more important than being a two time champion especially yeah. to him yeah well it ultimately makes his brand stronger right mm. so he's able to you know even to this day to this day to this day <laughs> If you, like, go to someone who fought in the UFC and, like, or, like, anything, I was, like, I was the number blah, blah, blah thing in UFC. And it's, like, okay, so, like, it it enhances their brand at a, even on, on that level where it's, like, well, this guy was a coach and mm-hmm. he's the, he was the number eight guy for X amount of years. At, you know, Elliot Marshall, I'm, I'm not sure he champions it or not, but he champions him being, like, one of the best, like, IBJFF you know, jujitsu white dudes mm. to ever do it. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like, it was like, there was like, white dudes were not doing this. And, and you know, this is like his Martin Luther King moment. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, he's like, at, I he's had like, a dream like, speech. <laughs> I had a dream that white people I had a dream would that be successful with, with, metal, with gold medal and yeah. IBJJ. Yeah. Yeah. IBJJ. Yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, like that's, it's, it just strengthens the proper 12 brand. It strengthens does the it? straight blast gym. I mean, I guess, it, I guess it's, it's just, yeah, anything he does, but, I wonder if, like, because you can already say former UFC champion mm-hmm. as far as branding. Like, you didn't yeah. say current UFC champion. You didn't change anything. Well, I'm just saying, if you make a company with a mission statement for fighting or whatever it is, and you're... Maybe, shit but is how much... Is he invested very well in the fight game outside of his own shit? No, I'm not, like, I'm not saying... I'm not saying he's even... I'm just saying that's like, oh, those are examples of, like, what you can use your name for sure. brand for. I know? just wonder if he even gives a fuck about that. Like... I think he does. I, 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 I guess... Where I'm confused, or maybe not confused, because clearly he's here to just be the best of whatever he does. Yeah. But I wonder what he wants to do. Because I think it was very clear what he wanted to do before he left. 
anyone but his wife, apparently. Yeah. And, and lots of blow. I just wonder, like, coming back after yeah. Cerrone, what is it? What is his goal here now? Yeah. I don't know. That, it seemed like he had very clear goals yeah. before he left. And yeah. then he kind of succeeded at all of them except one. Two. Well, he got... He got sh- he got Diaz. He got Diaz eventually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it could be Mayweather beat the shit out of him. May- but I feel like leaving to go fight Mayweather, beating Mayweather wasn't the goal. Getting Mayweather to fight him was the goal. See, and the, and here's where I'm having a trouble understanding his brand and understanding what he wants because he, when he's speaking for the brand, he's like, "If I fought him again, I could win." And it's like, does he believe in that? Or I don't think he. I think he just needs you to believe it yeah. so that you buy it when he does it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. You know, um, I don't know that he believes it at all, and I feel like that was pretty transparent. After he was trying to like talk Habib down during the fight, Habib was like, "No, I'm going to kill you." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like yeah, yeah, it was yeah. pretty clear he was do everything he does is for the brand. Yeah. If you were ever concerned and curious if it was yeah. for the brand, that was a very clear moment. What did he think he was gonna say? Like, I'm know. so curious. Like, I, I don't know if you thought you hey, would convince this dude this for the market. I'm gonna pull the curtain out down <laughs> for a second. Just you, between you, men to man, <laughs> this shit was a joke. Yeah. Was he like, "Oh fuck, my bad." Oh, you're really serious? I'm sorry. We're just going to box the rest of this. Is that cool? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I wanted, Khabib. Like, like, what did he think his answer was going to be? And Khabib was like, I barely speak English. Yeah. Sir, I, the English <laughs> I know is I'm going to kill. I do not understand these nuances. That you speak <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's a good point. I don't know what his goal is. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what he wants. <laughs> I don't, like, what I don't he really... Want? What do you want? I don't know. So I, it's hard to sort of see like what the fight feature because all of those fights have different goals yeah so like yeah. and he could probably have his way in any of them right like there's no like Daniel White's not gonna say no to any of those problems. no so it's really up to him so I, I, I don't know what he wants out of any of these well I think Daniel White doesn't care because he's like fucking as long as you're making me money he's like I don't care how yeah, you do like, it and, and McGregor is in that rare position where he will always make you money yeah so like it's up to him yeah Last thing that I want to end on. We usually end on a UFC type note, but this one we're going to give Bellator the love it deserves. Um, you know, we talked about... Shout out to Bellator. Shout out to Bellator because they're really doing a good job. Um, sometimes. Sometimes. And this is one of the bad jobs that we're going to talk about. <laughs> but this is the, but it's good for objectively for me because I'll watch it. Um, you know, they they have this good mix between, you know, getting girls like Chris Cyborg on mm-hmm. and... You know, have them be successful against Julia Budd, who's like equally as good. I don't know what the fuck she's gonna do after that because no one else is fighting Chris Cyborg. Um, and it's been Chris Cyborg's entire complex, yeah, her entire career, right? But here, especially more not than never, because it's like she's not going down to one thirty five unless they make another division. I don't know, but she got her back. They paid her. She's like, I made my money, so and I can mm-hmm. I can have whatever sponsors I want now. So she's good. Um, but I just wanted to get because that fight was better than whatever bullshit UFC was on that weekend. Um, a yes. couple weekends ago and I just wanted to give the just desserts for that there were people who were there specifically for Chris Cyborg they were chanting her name like she's a household name even in Bellator so Bellator is doing the right thing it's like I wonder what her star power like I I have a hard time sort of recognizing what Cyborg's star power was yeah. before UFC because I've kind of always known about her before. right uh, but I feel like everyone who's kind of been entrenched in it has always known about Cyborg People, people, every promotion that she's been in since she's been famous, people have been very excited for her arrival. Mm-hmm. UFC, you know, she was she doing was, uh, she killed, Force? she ran the table in Strike Force, Strike Force, um, um, and in Invicta, in Invicta, finally UFC, yeah, um, she wine fights that one time, yeah, um, but um, in Bellator she was received just as, and that's a big thing to note, especially through a business. Even though she kind of shot herself in the foot through a business standpoint in the UFC, but I guess that's where you go to Bellator because like we don't give a shit. Kind of, like, yeah, they don't give a shit. And also the UFC wasn't like, what is the UFC gonna do for her? Like they made her, they basically made her the division in yeah. one forty five. No one's fighting her there, right? Um, she can go to what she she can barely make one thirty five, and she's not gonna beat Nunes. I think she made like one thirty seven or something. Yeah, like she's not gonna be Amanda Nunes, <laughs> and she can't get any lower than that. And the UFC really had a hard time, I think, getting super behind her, um, at least in a way that she felt comfortable with. Yeah, and so the the business relationship was never going to last there. And well, no, I mean, like she, I said, I say she shot herself in the foot. It's because like how she left. Well, yeah, she <laughs> left. She was like data exposing data white. Yeah, and yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, like you well, edited this, and they're like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like. Scott Cokey, the Coker doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't care. Like, He's like, more of that. Yeah, more, yeah, yeah. More. You're going to be a shit show. We're, Bring that shit over here. We're Jerry Springer. Yeah. Right here. And, which is fine, yeah. because she showed up, and she got, she got like, main event 
like heavyweight champion respect there, she which is got, exactly she, her what first fight was the headliner. she probably deserves. Right. Um, she's the, she's the best fighter in Bellator, hands down. She's the best fighter almost everywhere she goes. Yeah. Like the first time she was not the best fighter was well, I mean outside in MMA. Yeah. Was the UFC and she was the best really until we finally found out. Yeah, she the, fought. The was the best. Um, but I don't know what the rest of her career looks like. But she at this point, I don't think it matters because she's got the she's she got can the like right off in the sunset and be fired. She's a legend in South America where she lives, mm-hmm. or Brazil where she lives. Um, she's a legend in the sport. She spent the last she spent her basically her entire UFC career expanding her brand. Yeah. in other places. Yeah, just using the UFC machine. Yeah, yeah. to like promote like her her sort of self wellness shit. And yeah, like she's she's mo- like the cyborg name is a brand now. If yeah. It wasn't before, right. and I guess that's the important. Uh, yeah, I just want to give that short, small shout out to get to my major thing, which is like, uh, what is that guy's name? It was AJ something in Bellator. AJ, his name is AJ, and he's like a pretty good featherweight or one fifty five or one or the other. Um, let me just look up what his name is. AJ calls out. Okay, AJ Agazarm. AJ Agazarm is like a ranked. Bellator fighter, I'm pretty sure, fairly positive, and he's not bad. He's actually pretty good. 29 years old, he calls out um, Logan Paul, and I think Logan Paul and Scott Coker accepted. I don't know if that's gonna happen. You know what I mean? Because Logan Paul's another one of those brand nerds. Where it's like they'll do anything to get the free circulation. Yeah. Um. But I am with the shits because, and I think it is, po- and I'll tell you why I think it's possible, right? I think it's possible because they do this shit all the fucking time. Jack Hager comes from the WWE, although Jack Hager was a Division One wrestler and Well, I think the difference fighter. is Jack Hager left. He did a bunch of pro wrestling shit. And yeah. he was going to make the transition to MMA like a lot of pro wrestlers do. Right. He was going to just do MMA. It right. just turned out that he also got opportunities to wrestle at the same time. Right. So it, it became a kind of a shit show. Right, right. Like, but but um, back to my point is, you know, they did that with Jack Hager who was, like, a, 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 a sensation in WWE as far as, like, mm. star power in Bellator, right? And kind of has connections in Mexico because he worked at AAA over there for a little right. bit. So, like, he knows promoters now. Right. Like, he's in the fight game in both fight games, really. And Aaron Shore is a guy who Fair. was literally just a guy on a, a reality TV show, mm-hmm. and then they bring him to Bellator, and then he's successful. He's beating people in Bellator, and not just getting wins on via points, mm-hmm. but he's putting people out. He's getting knockouts, he's getting submissions, he ends up being a pretty good fighter. Mm-hmm. Awesome face for the company, you know, uh, is not really, like, into controversy or bad controversy, even though I don't even think he's got good controversy. He's just a fighter that's being successful. Well, I think, like, the controversy is he was a reality show star and now he's winning. winning fights. So, and like, I think he, that's we have to use, take him seriously. Right. No, that's a controversy. I, I think that's what the UC was trying to achieve mm. with uh, CM Punk. So CM Punk is, like, 0-10 for celebrities that they have. <laughs> whereas, <laughs> like, whereas, like, Bellator is, like, doing a good job at finding people who are relatively talented, mm-hmm. who have the ability to be fighter, uh, fighters, and, and then give like, them a, a Maybe they don't have platform. super wide, like, WWE reach as far as platform is concerned, but, yeah. like, there are micro, I say micro platforms, but yeah. there are people, some of these dudes have, like, a million followers. Yeah. That's, that is a significant fan well, base that sure. will follow you wherever well, you go. Sure. It's not, like, some rinky-dink, like, like uh, reality TV show. It's, like, what is it, like, Big Brother or something in England? Uh, yeah, something like that. It's something huge. It's, it's like, our... Um, it's like if a bachelor decided he was going to go fight. That or or um, the real world. The it's real, like yeah. their real world over there in England. Or our big brother. I don't think we do big brother anymore, but we used to. Oh, yeah. Um, He's got millions of followers as a result. Yeah. Um, because there's this vested, vested interest to watch his day to day life in a reality And there's show. no reason that that should disqualify you from no. being a If you can fight, you can still be a fighter. Like, well, that's why I think this would be a And good I think that's the Logan, Logan Paul, Paul idea. Is like yeah. Logan Paul clearly has trained to fight. And he's boxed now. He he's had a, a kind of whatever him. fight against KSI. Yeah, uh, where he clearly seemed more qualified to be there than KSI did because he was a good. He was a good, from what I understand, he was a very good high school prospect out of California, mm-hmm. and he took the the, the fight seriously. He and did. he looks like a person. I watched him fight. I'm like, mm, he's not all that. Good. He took it. He's not, but he was against a guy who's also not very good. Yeah, but which makes it worse. Uh, but there's no reason to believe that he, he can't make that gear for MMA. Right, that he couldn't 
maybe th- like try a little harder. Honestly, if that was a uh, MMA match between KSI, he would have murdered him because Probably. he knows how to wrestle. So like he just would have, re- and that's where I think like. I said Jake Hager before because Jake Hager's wrestling uh, had a wrestling a real wrestling background before, mm. and then he picked up all that other stuff as far as I think Logan Paul has the same capability to do that. He's at, he's obviously clearly an athlete. Mm. If he's on steroids, it doesn't matter. It's on Bellator, right? Right. So, so <laughs> but I wonder what his motivation to do that would be because make his brand bigger. The difference is like he got a pretty big amount of like the bag when it came to promoting this fight. K- with KSI because he was very heavily involved in the promotion. Yeah. Um, Bellator and Scott Cooper own all the money here. Here's the thing, though. We know that Scott Cooper will make... Well, he'll make a deal. Lance. He'll make yeah. a deal. Because, like, he'll... And, you don't, and he doesn't have to be the core center of the promotion. He's a, He doesn't have that ego like Dana... Like, when you, when you get into business with Dana White, it's going to be under the UFC umbrella. Mm-hmm. Whether... You know, and you're going to do it the UFC way. Right. You're going to become a UFC product. Now, how much ever money you make is based how big you're... Like, Mayweather, he's like, whatever you need, I'm going to pay you because we'll make it double. Right. So whatever you need, we'll give that to you. Right? Where in Bellator, there, you know they're willing to make... De- like, Risen. The, every year they have, like, a Risen cross-promotion mm. thing. And clearly Risen's making a ton of money. But that it. seems more like a place... Um, Logan Paul would want to go. That's right. Because I Risen will do whatever the whatever circus bullshit exactly. you want exactly. to make this happen. Yeah, and then he'll um, and then he'll have like a ridiculous. And he'll out. fight like a Japanese, Although like he, a reality star. I was gonna say maybe they won't because of what he did in that Suicide Forest. Maybe. So Japan's like, hey, we take that. Might be the one thing they yeah. can but like, there's yeah. someone there who wishes they could, but you fucked up right. in a way we can't like ignore. I, I don't think he'll have, he'll be fighting anybody in Risen anytime soon, but I think. Because of that flexibility that Scott Cooker has to like make deals with just about everyone, ISIS, like whoever, yeah. <laughs> whoever's, got the, who's ever got the the, the thing um, at the time, um, I think they're willing to like, be like, hey Logan Paul, we know you're interested. We have a fighter lined up for you. I I don't know about that fighter because AJ is really good. I've watched him fight before, but aside from that, it's at 145 pounds. But I also think Logan if AJ Paul, if, if if AJ wanted to be a part of this, yeah, like he, was, he, he fight should. Up, you think? Maybe. Because Logan Paul was at 198 pounds when he fought KSI. Yeah. That's a 50-pound weight Huge. cut. <laughs> That's a 50 and pound I think it'd be really interesting that if, if Scott was willing to be patient about this yeah. line and AJ kept winning, yeah. and he can, he can sort of rope Logan Paul into a fight, get him tuned up a little right. bit, see how he does. And Bellator and would be wins, the place to do it. And then suddenly he wins a second one. Now, yeah. now you can have a conversation now you're, now you're about having a, conversation a fight with a real it. fighter. Right. Um, the same way they did... Uh, Strike Force was trying to do with Herschel Walker yeah. for a while right. because he was like 51 or something. And right. they were like, let me just give you some dudes to see what happens. And he was killing these random guys. If I'm Logan Paul, though, and I think this is what Logan Paul's doing, I, th- I think this might, I don't think this may, or th- this could happen. And I think the pieces are there for that to happen because Scott's going first with the shits. It's just a matter of whether Logan Paul's with the shits or not because Logan Paul didn't make that call out. No. Logan Paul um, can fight. A YouTuber for yes. ten million dollars. Right, that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> like Logan Paul can find another way to make this money. Right, it, like if he has to actually want to be a fighter. This right. is going to be what, is, right. what he does. So and this be... would be the way in, but I don't know if he cares about that. No, like he would rather just make like diss tracks to like I don't know fucking Keemstar. Yeah. Or whatever. He would rather have his know. like untalented brother do an R and B songs. Yeah, <laughs> or um, self help yeah. uh, subscriptions or something. Right, right. Now. right. It'll be like a I don't really I like I don't understand how that like generation of YouTube stars can seem to be relevant, but they do. Well, because he keeps so, stuff, he he says something wild every single year, does something wild every year. Right, and then Probably. the news cover, but like it's normal us, celebrities, we're the, we're don't, the problem. <laughs> right, <laughs> but I feel like that used to happen to normal quote unquote normal celebrities, yeah. and the reason they still stay relevant is because then they make a product that we all like and we right. just forget about. Well, that product. they make also a movie secure. or a song or whatever. Logan Paul just kind of does stuff. That's and, like, like that it's Twitch fine. market of people who like of kids mm. is the same YouTube market. It's the same, like you know what I mean. Like mm. he's like cornered himself into being the wild white dude who does things in public. So I wonder if there's like if like I don't know if there's brand overlap there. Like are are is the fight the fight community something someone are, a group of people that want to see that? Yes. Guy? Like, are they yes. full of 12-year-olds who are like, I want to see Logan Paul fight? There's a lot of 12-year-olds, but there's a lot of people, like, you, like every every time there's a Logan Paul fight, every major news outlet that I know in the world of fighting, as far as, like, The Fighter and the Kid, or Joe Rogan's podcast, or all the, they is all that, cover it in some way. Is that all just, a, is that just people trying to get attached to the SEO? Of course. Attached to of the course. Top? But, but how much is that just getting attached to 
the conversation because the conversation is going to be big because they are bringing their audience with them? Or, and how much of it is like fight fan generally curious about this dude? I think there's a, there is an intrigue there because he provides the same as much as the intrigue is there for CM Punk being involved in the fight world too. It's that like okay, yes, he pulls in this giant WWE presence with him. At, you know, that's his core fan group, right? Mm. Um, he also gets into the age-old reason why the UFC even exists. It's like, can regular people do this? You know what I mean? Or it's like an experiment. Like, you know... No, I think what, Punk what, was just like a ref, like a reaction, or not a reaction, or an attempt to recreate um, Lesnar. Because Lesnar left WWE, though, went to Japan. Lesnar was legitimately scary coming out of... Well, I think part of why it worked for Lesnar is because he looks like a dude who will kill you. But, he, but, every, but he's but also was a D1 know, wrestler. That's what I'm saying. People and was, like, was actually literally killing people. Right. <laughs> like, right. I just really think that the WWE people, like, you know, like there's some people who are like ironically into the WWE, like mm-hmm. yourself and mine, where it's like, oh, you know, sweet chin music, it's funny. Uh, mm-hmm. And the other half, it's like, it's real to me, god damn it. <laughs> and then like they got to see in real time that 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 shit isn't real and he's not going to RKO somebody and he's not going to stone cold stun or somebody he's going to get wrapped up and then beaten to a pulp well i think i think that's what people wanted out of lesnar and that didn't happen right i think frank Mir beat him once with a thing you never seen before and right. that the shit didn't happen again yeah um but and lesnar is unique because i mean if lesnar wasn't unique he wouldn't be brock lesnar right because no other wrestler gets to this, gets to this walk into a place. And I think that kind of I stuff. think at some level it's Brock Lesnar's voice, and that's what people are really. He just want to listen to Brock Lesnar yeah. speak. <laughs> he's high. He just sounds like a weasel. Yeah, but like he's a two hundred and ninety five pound weasel. And he screams, and it's like that does not sound like. <laughs> that sound like. But like, I don't know. Like this, I guess this is like a new version of that experiment. Yeah, because I don't think. Dana White knew what would happen if he brought Lesnar Dana, in. Well, yeah. But they tried it anyway. Well, Dana White's even floated the possibility of Logan Paul. So, like, who knows what happens if, like, Logan Paul has to come in. I just wonder, is there a Heath Herring there in Bellator for Logan Paul to run over and, of like, make people believe? Bellator's believe. known for, like, having dads that work in, like... The right, but the difference is, Heath Herring, he came up with a fucking cowboy hat. He was, like, a little character. Yeah. And, like, he had won a couple fights. People were like, I know that dude, yeah. I think. I think it's even better if he just fights some guy that no one knows and beats him. Well, I think for Logan Paul, it doesn't matter who yeah. he fights as so long as he wins. Yeah. It could be, like, like Adam from the grocery store. Yeah. We, he, we, he we bought him some tr- some trunks. He brought him in. He's actually just left his ship to Here's come fight. Here's the thing, though. Like, with heavyweights, you get away with a little bit... Like, when Jack Hager fought... St- Everyone's dad. Yeah. Um, fought that guy. <laughs> fought that guy that was working. He's like, I work in a fucking processing plant. Yeah, meat plant or something. Yeah. And then they're like, what are you going to do with the money? He's like, I save it and be sad or something. Yeah, I got to pay bills, my yeah. dude. I, pay me <laughs> I have kids. I, you pay me $300 to get wrestled down. Like, <laughs> I bought an Xbox One. Right. <laughs> for Christmas. Like, this shit doesn't matter unless yeah. I win and I'm not going yeah. to win. I'm just here to, like, exactly. sell this t-shirt. Um, I think it'll... That's... They have plenty of those guys. The only problem I'll say is this: like you can get away with that in heavyweight with people who like who are at the smaller weights. They're usually pretty good athletes, mm-hmm. and where they might, you know, be not as dedicated to work. Like like those pro level guys. If you're in the UFC, like most of those guys train eight hours a day. Mm-hmm. Well, at some point, you kind of have to. Right. Right. In order to compete, that's what you have to do. Most yeah. of those guys are coaching or doing whatever. And Bellator, it looks like you can just kind of do this part-time. Like, <laughs> like, like, well, like, you have to because like Bellator's not paying any yeah. money for any of It depends because most of those guys get money through sponsorship. A lot, I mean, a lot of them get that money, but like how many are – like if you if Bellator is paying like a $10,000 purse maybe, yeah. like how much are you getting for sponsorship? Maybe right. four or five times that, but it's still right. not a whole lot after right. paying for your training camps and that kind of shit and travel, right. which you're probably, which you're probably on the hook for. Um and not to mention, this is probably all 1099 works. So you're paying taxes and all that shit, too. Exactly. So, like, you definitely still have a job. A lot of them do, unless you're in, like, the top 15. Yeah. If you're in the top 15, then you're probably, like... Well, you're probably, you probably have enough of... You probably have enough fight purse and sponsorship to, yeah. like, be fine. Right. To take care of all the other things. And you, you have a name recognition, probably, so you can, like, you're licensing out the people. You're, like, selling used cars or some shit or whatever. Like, people are saying... Hey, don't know. don't knock the sales, because I have Quintus out here selling houses. If you no, know. I think you should. Like, you should absolutely be able to put your name on a fucking billboard and make a hundred grand for it. Because so whatever. Nice. Like, I love it. I love it. But, uh, yeah, those are the last two things I want to talk about. Um, 
I interviewed um, Slippery Pete Barrett, uh, Contender Series finale guy. He's fucking awesome. Really cool guy, Boston, um, represented by Top Game Management. So I'm going to have that sent over to lay editor. Hopefully we can get that done this week. Um, I got to get another interview lined up. So I got to, I guess, figure that out. But that's it. I want to do this update show at least once a month because I like them. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I'm just going to get rid of the lips, just download all of the things and keep those episodes and just like put a background to them and just put them on YouTube. Well, is that where the traffic is? Yeah, that's where almost all the traffic is now. I mean, like, there's some traffic on the lip sync. And I liked having that little thing. Um, but, like, here, I can also still do this. I can just, like, s- just take the audio tracks from this and just, like, put it up somewhere so it gets left on iTunes or whatever. And that, and, like, there's no reason to pay for a server if this is where you're trying to be. Yeah, like, almost all the traffic. You don't, you don't have to just be everywhere everybody else is. People that's like, like it's, you know, it's easier than just, like, going to my page and, like, finding the link. Mm. You know, like how many people are engaging this for the first, like in, this content for the, like primarily through like a link on a website? Probably not. Well, if that, they're all going through YouTube. Yeah, they're all or going YouTube through IG easier. to go go to a YouTube right. link or whatever. Right, YouTube is YouTube is just easier to access. <laughs> yeah. Um. And also, I don't know if because I can't measure it, or I don't know. Um. But if I put the link in through the Instagram portal and they're going through the Instagram portal, is that counting the downloads? Because I went to I listened to a whole episode. I'm like, it didn't it didn't update. So, <laughs> so that's so a good that, question. I yeah, I don't think so. Maybe um, maybe they only count downloads from like the actual right. like download link from the fucking right. website. Or do we say so? It? The problem is like or wherever you put the download link. That's what I'm wherever saying. You embed it. So like I can measure it on Linktree how mm. many people are interacting with it, but it doesn't tell me how many people sat and listened to the fucking podcast. Mm. Whereas YouTube, it's like if you watch it, it's I get those views. Right. So it doesn't matter what you watch it on. It's not if you watch it, I get over a certain amount of time, I get those views. So I can measure how much more, how many more people are watching this versus how many people are just like. So I, I have to like rebuild it because with Lipson before we were getting like fifty downloads, sixty downloads, like every episode mm-hmm. and then now it's starting to go down I'm like it's a big be- and I'm like because I'm doing these interviews I have to put it through that link tree because right. if I just do one then it's, everyone's just watching that one right so if you I, want to push them through the other content right right exactly so I think that it's just getting spread out too much versus just having That's the true. one even if you do re-expand that way do that after you have like the base here and you can kind of move them out of it right which is like the exact opposite of what we do at our Passions. we just do audio stuff all the, like most of our stuff is audio and yeah. we back it up on YouTube sometimes but yeah. like that's we do the opposite where like we do have a primary source it's yeah. probably audio probably through our lips and probably yeah. through our like tree that way for yeah. podcast audio shit sometimes there's a video backup but like right. we don't even touch YouTube mostly if like this ever gets like bigger than it is and people are like we want extra things I'm, I'm like well then there was a demand right. for it so now I will have that right. separate but I, I think there is an interest there's always an interest in audio yeah but don't feel compelled to do both things at the same yeah. time, especially if it's going to cost you something. Well, I can do, I can do, now that because I have this, mm-hmm. I can definitely just have the audio on YouTube and I can put it on Spotify now. And right, that's what I mean, because you can't like, unless you have a subscription, you can't just like turn on YouTube to listen. Yeah. If that's what you're, if you're like working right. and can't like, but Spotify, you could. So, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Egg, exactly. But that's it for today. Yeah, that was the uh, metadata corner. <laughs> Sponsored How to by make YouTube. your podcast <laughs> by Jared and Trey. Um, every time I ask for an interview and I get it, like they have a Skype, and I have to get them through Skype, they're like, "Hey, Jared and Trey," you know. And it's, it's funny every single time. It's like he's not here with me right now. No, it's just the one. It's and, just I, and I think, um, just as a compliment to you, you're honey trapping these guys because mm-hmm. they're like, "Got him, got, got him." We got this tall black gentleman. With the, it's like, where, where is he? Wait a minute. They don't want me there. Yeah, they don't want me asking questions. That would be funny though. I'm not doing this unless you have Jared here. Sir, what do you feel? <laughs> How do you feel about OnlyFans? Only f- oh. Do you have one? <laughs> do you think you should have one? Let's have a Patreon. Yeah, instead of a Patreon, so Patreon go to exactly what the content the people want. Yeah. Because Dana White's not going to take care of you. If we had a Patreon, what would we even sell? Uh, Just... Guess dick pics. Uh, also, know. dick pics. I don't know. What, what are you selling? Yeah, 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 yeah. This week is Jared's t- week of dick pics. Yeah. And then we'll switch. We'll Every month switch. is a different dick pic. Yeah. You have to guess whose dick it is. Guess whose dick it is. That's the picture. It'll be wearing costumes or something. I yeah. don't know. 
like named Thanksgiving, after it'll be like dressed like a yeah. turkey or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And then after a while, it'll be like name that costume. Oh, right, right. And not just the penis. Yeah. Because they'll know the penis. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> Clearly, that's, Clearly, I've seen that penis before. Yeah, well, I know that penis. That would have glitter in it, so clear it's trays. Yeah. I don't know why he keeps putting glitter on it, but like, I get it. Shouts out to Prince. <laughs> I'm sure that's what he did every morning. Just a handful of glitter. Oh, he just threw it at it. Yeah. Now that I figured he sprinkled He's it Prince. Like he doesn't have to something. That's true. I think he just was glittery. Yeah. I don't think he had to throw glitter on it I think it at all. that might have just been birthmarks. Remember when they used to make the lotion that glittered in it? They I still think, make that. Do they still? Yeah. The shimmery lotion? Yeah. I think he just... I think that was just what his dick was. It's just alcohol, rubbing alcohol and a scent, like a floral scent. Mm-hmm. It's no, it was like skin. it was like a lotion that just yeah, shimmered. Yeah, I know, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. There's just like so much cologne. Oh yeah, the there was some sort of scent in it, and it just perpetually which seemed out your like skin. which seems really excessive. Yeah, you're it's gonna, a lot. I'm shimmering gold, and also I smell like lilac. Yeah, yeah chill. Could you have figured out anything else but that? No. Shouts out to Shea Butter for keeping it simple. Yes. And cocoa butter. For for real. We're out of here. Share the cocoa butter for sure. holding yeah. it down. Yeah, holding it down. That's it. OJ didn't do it. <laughs>